beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the Word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed we have currently and growing in the world all of the founders proposed to be the keys of the kingdom that means they are the access point to enter into a certain dimension of life civilization consciousness or reality are we together we have several religions across the world with different founders purporting different facets of the revelation of god but jesus came and made a bold statement that he was and still remains the only authorized access so there is only one key to the kingdom the bible declares that there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved do you know why i'm teaching you this look up please look up the time has come in the church where we must be biblically sound we must be theologically sound. The context of our spiritual communication must be balanced, must be intelligent, must be theologically sound. You must be able to make full proof of your ministry, defending the faith by understanding what you believe. Not just believing blindly. Are we together? The days that we live in would require conviction conviction that comes not only through encounters but through understanding so i'm taking out time to teach you this because many believers are not mentored to understand god the average believer understands different aspects of power glory here and there but the sequential growth this kingdom has an explanation you need to know the way the kingdom was built and how it operates are we together yes so this looks like very basic but it's amazing the level of failure you will command not knowing this there is only one key to the kingdom there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved are we together the bible says in romans chapter 10 reading from verse 8 to 10 it says that um the word is nigh thee in thy heart and in thy mouth even the word of faith that we preach it says that if thou shalt confess with thy heart the lord jesus thy mouth the lord jesus and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead it says you shall be saved are we together yes then it says for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and then with the mouth confession is made that leads to salvation so this is the technology that God employed. So when you follow that door, who is Christ, the Bible calls him the new and the living way. He becomes the only access point. If you have not passed through that door, you are not saved. Are we together? It doesn't matter how you are around church, you are not saved. 
Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, John 3, thou art a man, we know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man can do these things except God be with him. Then in verse 3, Jesus is teaching now and he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he's talking about being born again now, he shall not see the kingdom of God. Are we together? And then, except a man be born of water, verse 5 now, and the spirit, he shall not enter the kingdom. So we know there is one key, and only key to the kingdom. But there, when you get into the kingdom, there are the keys of the kingdom. Not a key. The, the basis for access that help us to function in this kingdom, there are many. The laws of the kingdom, the methodologies of the kingdom. You need access to just one key. Jesus, the son of the living God, the new and living way. But when you come into the kingdom, listen carefully. You need to know that there are keys of the kingdom. Say keys of the kingdom. And the sequence is this. Watch this. A believer's... Come. You stand here. Face me, please. My friend, please come stand here. Face me. No, you stand here. Are we together? My dear, come. Now, watch this. They represent different levels. This gentleman, for instance, is the one the Bible calls a natural man. Everybody say natural man. That means one who is alienated from the life of God. He is not yet a partaker of the life of God through the new birth experience that we call salvation. Is someone learning? You have to understand what I am teaching you. The first ministry that this man needs... It's not a preacher's ministry. The first ministry that this man needs is the ministry that the Bible calls the goodness of God. Listen very carefully. The Bible says it is the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. So there is a dimension of the encounter with the goodness of God that this man needs to have. And that dimension is sponsored by the Holy Spirit. So, the Holy Spirit is the one who can make this man even have the need, see the need for Jesus in his life. John 16, Jesus still in his mentorship session, began to introduce the disciples to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Jesus started by saying, I have many things to tell you, but ye cannot bear them now. He says, how be it? Listen carefully. That when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he shall guide you into all truth. Are we together? He shall take of what is mine and shall give to you. Then the Bible says that the Holy Spirit has a threefold ministry to the world. The world of natural men. He says he will convict you of three things. Number one, of sin. Say sin. Number two, of righteousness. Say righteousness. Number three, of judgment. Are we together? So it is the ministry of the Holy Spirit to bring this man to a point. Now he will need the cooperation of a preacher because the Bible says, how shall they hear except they be a preacher? Are we together? Are you understanding the methodology of the kingdom? Except they be a preacher. So God depends on men to allow the ministry of the Holy Spirit to find expression. Now this gentleman is sitting in koinonia or any meeting and he hears the word of the Lord coming and listen, it is not any preaching that saves. Understand this. It is not any preaching that saves. There is an exact spiritual information that leads to the salvation, new birth. Now all truth in the Bible have a measure of light and liberty that they bring. Listen to me. But there is an exact message that turns a sinner to become a righteous person. Are, are you following now? This is a refresher course. We are dealing with the things that many believers do not know that continues to make their life and their assignment within their environment ineffective. Now it is true that I can teach any message and raise an altar call. 
but that even if it is in one minute there has to be a way of routing that altar call such that the content are located to be captured for salvation is represented there are we together the gospel that saves is called the gospel of salvation everybody shout say the gospel of salvation now there are many gospels in the bible by many gospels we don't mean erroneous gospels the word gospel just means an announcement of glad tidings it doesn't have anything necessarily to do with jesus as it were it's just a proclamation of glad tidings the word gospel means good news are we together a proclamation of an information that gladdens the heart that's what is called gospel so there is the gospel of salvation and the gospel of salvation is a message everybody say a message the gospel of salvation is the revelation listen carefully the gospel of salvation is the revelation of the father's love a revelation of the father's love are we together manifested in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus christ and the object of that sacrifice is man first and then creation the death of jesus does not only affect men it affects creation are we together so the revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of the son jesus to man first and then creation and then man's response everybody say response man's response to that gospel who had believed our report to that man the arm of the lord had been revealed are we together yes so when i hear the gospel what is the gospel for god so loved the world that he gave he proved his love for man by allowing jesus his son to come to the earth now watch this the assignment of jesus on earth was not to die death was simply a gateway to help him fulfill that assignment are we together jesus came to earth to fulfill a threefold assignment number one jesus came as a representation the image of the invisible god until jesus came they did not know god so they would they would accredit or credit both the things that were done by the devil fallen angels and god to the god of the hebrews until jesus came there was no bodily representation of the god of the heavens so jesus came as the image of the christ made manifest are we together the bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory even as the glory of the father full of grace and truth and the bible calls him the image of the invisible god the invisible god that hitherto we only heard about and a few people had certain encounters of different dimensions of him that god is now personified in the christ so you can look at jesus to know who god is jesus came as the will the thoughts of god the word word of god is the word logos the thoughts the intent of a man seeking out for expression are we following tonight this is basic salvation that is not basic at all it is the strengthener of your christian faith you have to know how you came into this life so jesus came to reveal to men the image of the invisible god as a commitment and a desire to help men know god number two jesus came as an agent of reconciliation the bible calls him the mediator of the new covenant what does that mean the bridge like two aggrieved parties the word mediator is a legal term it's a system of reconciliation that means two aggrieved parties or at least an aggrieved party that has broken relationship and fellowship so jesus came as the bridge but in order to fulfill that ministry as savior and mediator he needed to pass through the legal system of the spirit and there are ordinances that have been in the realm of the spirit that he had to subscribe to ordinance number one the soul that sinned it shall die 
is a law that any soul that sins the penalty is death are we together yes ordinance number two without the shedding of blood i'm doing a quick review so that we'll just pass this area without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins no atonement no remission are we together so jesus needed to satisfy that legal term number three that except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies it abides alone so only death leads to resurrection anything that is alive in itself cannot resurrect it will have to die and then resurrect with another life are we together now so jesus being the mediator watch this number one he came as a manifestation of the image of the invisible god number two he came as the mediator of the new covenant to fulfill that ministry of reconciliation drawing men connecting men to god and he needed to route it through abraham and by so doing fulfill the legal claims of justice the third reason why jesus came was to perform his high priestly ministry you have to understand this that he is a priest after the order of melchizedek that even in resurrection he had to take his blood the blood of the eternal sacrifice and he went before the tabernacle in heaven that was adumbrated by that that was on earth and he poured his blood upon that tabernacle so that once and for all salvation became real to men are we together yes so the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the love of the father demonstrated through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus to the end that when you hear that gospel and believe that it is true that jesus has satisfied the legal claims of justice that now standing before the throne you stand guiltless with the righteousness that is equal to that of the christ are we together not like that of the christ when you receive that report the bible says immediately two things happen to you number one the first thing that happens to you when you declare jesus as savior and lord is that there is a translation spiritually speaking from the domain the kingdom of darkness that means a domain that is under the legal authorization of satan into the kingdom of his dear son now follow me very carefully are we together and then the bible says that when there is that translation the second thing that happens and all these things happen concurrently is that by believing it is credited to you for righteousness like faithful abraham i hope you know the first person to hear the gospel was abraham our father the gospel was preached to abraham in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed abraham believed god and it was credited to him and that formula of abraham is what was given to the saints to hear the report of the lord and to believe by faith then it is credited to us as righteousness people like kenyon define righteousness as the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of guilt without a sense of condemnation and without a sense of inferiority this is what he calls righteousness i will want to add that more than that righteousness is the manifestation of the nature of the christ in a man it's more than just an act the manifestation of the nature of christ in a man is called righteousness righteousness is first who you are by reason of your believing the report of the lord now number three we are given the holy spirit according to galatians chapter 3 christ has redeemed us from the cause of the lord the bible says being made a cause for us for it is written in the law of moses that cost is every man that hangs upon the tree why that the blessing of abraham might come upon the gentiles what is the blessing of abraham i've taught it here justification by faith the blessing of abraham is not a pronouncement no there are blessings of abraham there is the blessing 
and there is the blessing of Abraham. Three of them are not the same. The blessing of Abraham is the justification that comes by faith. The blessings of Abraham are the speakings that came upon Abraham as an inheritance by God that we can route through the promise. The blessing is the Holy Spirit. Are we together? So the Bible says that the blessing of Abraham, justification by faith, might come upon the Gentiles to give us now access to receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. So we receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the representation of the life of God. He is the one we call Zoe. Now listen very carefully. The word eternal life is not something the Holy Spirit brings. It is His presence in us. The Holy Spirit does not bring eternal life. The Holy Spirit is the life of God. He is what we call Zoe. He is what we call the blessing. Are we together now watch this this man let me come back to our, our terms now as we used this man has been convicted of the holy spirit and a preacher makes what we know to be an altar call this gentleman comes out receives the life of god acknowledges christ as his savior and lord and according to the authority of scripture the bible says this man is saved because he believed in his heart unto righteousness and he confessed with his mouth the lordship of christ step one everybody says step one this is not the end of the journey he has now entered into the kingdom he has had one key the key to the kingdom jesus christ now that he's in the kingdom watch this this man can remain unfruitful forever right now in the kingdom he's no longer a natural man but he's also not a spiritual man. The Bible calls them carnal men. The word carnal means sensual. They have not grown to the level now where their impulses are aligned to the word and the spirit. He's not a natural man, but he's not yet a spiritual man in experience. Are we together? Now, many believers can remain at this level forever and be in church for 10 years and in honor to your longevity in church you can be called a deacon from a deacon you move to a pastor and then to whatever now humanly speaking you are making advancement but spiritually speaking you are still here are we together now watch this it is for this man that ephesians chapter 4 from verse 10 to 12 was given that he gave unto some apostles listen now the fourfold or fivefold as we call it is about to be introduced now he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. Why? To do the work of the ministry. I mean, for the perfecting or the equipping, the maturing it is called, of the saints. So that this man now matured will do the work of the ministry. Are we together? So the Holy Spirit is the next person to be introduced to this man because the word of god without the ministry of the holy spirit will turn this man to a religious man he will receive the knowledge that puffs up ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth the bible says for from such depart are you following me tonight so this gentleman gets born again the the sequence of spiritual growth is that for his health look up please for this man's health and his speed in growth it is important to be planted within a community of believers because being planted within the community of believers now will afford him the opportunity to be discipled an interesting word i'm introducing now say discipleship please shout it say discipleship it's a word that has been abused by religious um religious perceptions most of what we call discipleship in the body of christ is conformity to the doctrines and the patterns of a denomination but god's idea of discipleship is not conformity just to the patterns and the doctrines of a denomination or conformity to the central thought agreed upon by a body of religious people that's what most times we call discipleship is the reason why after many years of mentorship the people don't look like christ they look like the error 
Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. The Bible says, looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He started it. He should end it. So this gentleman is planted in a ministry like Koinonia. Are we together? Now he has an assignment. His assignment is to remain open and to know that now he must grow. That growth is a possibility in the kingdom. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. This guy is saved, but he needs to grow. If he does not grow, then Galatians chapter 4 becomes his tragedy. Are we together? He says, this I say then, an heir, for as long as he's a child, differeth not from a slave, although he be lord of all, but that he's under tutors and governors until the time appointed. So an heir, provided he remains a child, bankrupt of the knowledge that provides growth, that he does not differ from a slave. This gentleman's next port of call is to grow. Everybody say growth. The growth is threefold. Number one, the first dimension of growth for this gentleman is to be brought to a point where the foundational pillars, the foundational pillars of the Christian faith are taught him. I'm showing you how this person will become a powerful man tomorrow. The foundational pillars. The Bible begins to tell us in, in Hebrews chapter 6 that leaving these basic doctrines, let us move further to more superior things, paraphrasing. And he said the doctrine of baptism and of this and of that and of that. There are basic foundational pillars of the Christian faith. Please look up. If this guy receives the best of mentorship, he should be introduced, number one, to the value of the word of God in the life of the believer. This is key. It's not something he should learn later. He should learn that in this kingdom, the boundaries of God's commitment to us is scripture. He must learn that the primary way of knowing God is scripture. All scripture were inspired by the Holy Ghost, profitable for reproof, for doctrine, for correction, that the man of God may be mature, fruitful in every good work. Are we together? So this man must be brought to a point where he understands the value of the word of God. Number two, this man must be brought to a point where he understands the foundational value of the priesthood ministry of the believer. The priesthood ministry is not something he should learn when he's ordained into ministry. By priesthood, he should be able to understand the power of prayer as a system that transforms you and as a system that helps you to legislate in this kingdom. When this man is not taught prayer early, it will affect him. Are you seeing the sequence of growth? Number three, this man must be taught the value of corporate fellowship and community life as a system for preserving kingdom values i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity are we together it is like the oil that comes upon the head of Aaron down to his bed, to his skirt, his garment. He said, there the Lord had commanded the blessing. This man must be introduced to the foundation of corporate fellowship. Number four, this man must be introduced to an understanding of his identity in Christ. It matters for this man to know who he has now become in Christ. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29, it says, And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. There are many things that the Bible calls the believer. For instance, it says, Behold what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God is a name he must know 
Number two, the Bible tells us that we have been raised up together with Christ. Are we together? He must understand that fact. Number three, he must know now that he has become a partaker of the Spirit. Whereby we cry, Abba Father, that this man has access to God. According to Hebrews, he says, let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and help in time of need. This man must know he has access to the wisdom of the spirit now. He has access to fellowship. He should understand this as a foundational pillar of his spiritual growth. He must see the necessity of the fivefold ministry in his life as gifts given to the body to help mature him. The next thing is this man must understand that he has a purpose and a destiny in Christ. It's a foundational understanding. It's not something he should have when he graduates from school or gets married. No. The Bible talks about believers being predestined according to his eternal counsel. He must know that he was born for a reason. Are we together? When this gentleman, you are, this guy is stooping down to respect me, his back will pain him. Oh, stand, stand straight, eh? He respects me and he's leaning like this. God bless you for your honor. That's how the world will bow before you, eh? Now, watch this. But, but you can't you can stand. You have, you have tried. Let's, let's, let's be fair on the gentleman. Praise the Lord. Now, do you know that when this guy now understands these things, they are very strong pillars. Now, he can begin to move to the deeper matters of the kingdom. Are we together? What we call the mysteries of the kingdom. He will now begin to understand the methodologies, the ways of God. He now begins to understand the keys of the kingdom. He now begins to understand the mysteries that connect to the results that he desires. Already remember that the foundation of his life is God. Remember that he knows who he is in Christ. Because this man is about to go through challenges somewhere in his life. And if he's not told who he is in Christ and the value and the power of prayer and he does not have a system of mentorship that will tell him he's all right this guy will be discouraged soon when you get born again there's usually a bonus for you whether you pray or not things just work you are jumping is to motivate you are we together and you look at believers laboring and you are like ah, ah you mean this thing is this simple it's an encouragement so that whatever comes your way you will know your life is in his hands yes Do you know that this gentleman, having completed this realm, will now move to the next realm where he's mentored on the ways of God? Now, I begin to teach this guy on the principles of the kingdom. Here is where we begin to show him mysteries in the kingdom. That there is a mystery that connects longevity. There is a mystery that connects exemption. How favor works. How giving works. How the relationship with the Holy Spirit is built. How the anointing grows. The necessity for this. This guy continues to learn and learn them again while he grows. Now, this content is graduating this guy from a carnal man to become a spiritual man. With proper mentorship, he will get to a point where he becomes strong and mature. His convictions are strong. He's not only believing because a pastor said, a prophet said, an apostle said. He has come into an, a, a conviction about God. Watch this. When he gets to this level, the next assignment is for him to now be taught the principles that make him a battle axe. Thou art my battle axe and my weapon of war that you are not only in the spirit to grow alone are we together now that it's time for you to mature and now become useful this is where you need to now understand the principles of kingdom advance 
what it means to become an ambassador what it means to be mightily used by God it is at this point this man begins to learn the laws of influence this man begins to understand the deeper dynamics of the power of the Holy Spirit you see this is how he started as a naive confused Christian not knowing his left from his right and with a few months and a few years of proper discipleship look what he has become a mighty battle axe now look at this why are many believers in church for many years the average church has two to three services per week and after many years the believer is still here fighting for appointment fighting for deaconry fighting for eldership fighting for this and that and that and that and that and sometimes the pressure and politics of ministry will make the person to be ordained here as a pastor are we together now a baby about to lead babies he does not know anything about the things of god members say we don't like you and he says i'm not doing ministry again why because he's a baby he's broke and he fetches from church offering and says i will return it later he's a baby he has not seen the value and the excellence of service this guy is persecuted and he says god why me these are the languages of babes he says strong meter for them who are of full age who by reason of use have learned to exercise their senses unto godliness if i turn to god today and say why me is is an embarrassment um is, is, is an embarrassment to his investment in my life not at this level the difference between this man and this woman is that at this level you should have gained mastery the things of the kingdom you should not be learning how to walk at this level when you see someone who is you don't put babies on wheelchair but if an adult cannot walk, you put him on wheelchair. Nobody puts a baby on wheelchair and say, I said you should walk and you are not walking. Nobody prays for a baby for a miracle and say, rise up and walk. It is, it is allowed in that realm. But when you become an adult and you cannot walk, it's an attack. Listen, there are, when people say they are matured as believers, ask them what makes you think you are mature say i'm not a baby christian at all i'm not why what makes you believe say i've suffered in this life no that's not the reason why you are you are a mature christian not at all it is true that the furnace don't get me wrong please understand this it is true that the furnace of affliction can refine but suffering is not the reason why you are a mature christian you may be suffering as a result of ignorant attack that you don't have the knowledge for This person should be able to help this person in a heartbeat. This person should be equipped with such spiritual knowledge. Listen, if I come and say, Pastor, I'm in trouble. Like an encyclopedia should just open. Which mystery is allocated to solve this man's problem? This is the justification for being spiritual. When you talk to this person and say, um, You know the way life is. You are supposed to be here, not here. This person should have at this point had a covenant with God or be connected to strong covenants that even where his or her personal faith fails, there should still be a way of routing results. Otherwise, who brought you here? Who qualified you here? Are you seeing that a lot of baby Christians continue to say they are much at this realm people can start falling in your meetings you don't need to get here right here in fact before you understand one impartation and you will use falling down and say watch benihin is throwing people me too i'm throwing people we are the same whoever told you please understand what i'm teaching you this is a refresher series that many believers do not understand so the bible says i will give you pastors after my heart men of god hear me 
you have an assignment to build people sequentially you must know what they are to become not hope that you are doing the right thing like an architect when an architect is building he does not sit down hoping that i hope the building is coming well he has the master plan already he's only hoping that you get to a point where you are able to understand at this level there is something you can tell god that will make god act in a certain way to this man that he does not yet have it is one lord reach unto all but my brothers and my sisters something you have done a process of growth has brought you to this point there is a level of relationship and intimacy you have with god you cannot fear their fears no you cannot if me and this guy pray he's going to be frustrated we can pray a general church prayer but if he comes to the secret place to pray with me this guy is going to be tired he's going to pray from his realm and he will hear me talk to god in a way that does not make sense it may not even sound scriptural but it is there is a level i will call god names he has not had anywhere it's a name that my experience gave god he can come to the secret place and see me sitting quietly on the ground like a herbalist and say sir let's pray i said that's what i'm doing and he said i i thought prayer is just when you are talking and rolling and i say yes just do what you are taught you are correct only you can satisfy me only you can satisfy my soul satisfy my soul only you can satisfy me only you can satisfy my soul satisfy my soul only you can satisfy me only you can satisfy my soul you satisfy my soul sing it one more time yeah. only you can satisfy me only you can satisfy my soul listen don't worry you can stand back this is already a refresher course many of us are born again but I tell you why our lives are unfruitful I can watch you pray for one hour and tell you at least 10 things you have done wrong as serious as you are praying I will tell you the part that will be answered and the part that will not be answered I will tell you what was unnecessary in the content of your prayer now at this point god will not show you because the goal is not the accuracy of your prayer but the zeal of your prayer so he will allow the error just pass there's no need for accuracy he's cultivating zeal you can pray and make mistakes the goal is that you become prayerful the realm of accuracy is waiting for you in the future so you will find out that you are praying a lot of nonsense but the more you pray the more God is backing it the idea it is easier to edit your prayer life when you have received the spirit of prayer and supplication when you are corrected here you will be discouraged when you get here you will find out that many things you prayed for were already answered in your growth you were never supposed to pray for them growth already answered that prayer request only you can satisfy me only you can satisfy my soul satisfy my soul please sit down sit down there are many people parading themselves as matured christians you say why you say i've been born again for 10 years what does that mean what does that mean it is true that longevity if well utilized that's time and if you invested in it spiritually the bible says that he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life everlasting but he that sows to the flesh will reap corruption you can sow to the flesh for many years it does not mean you reap life are we together 
this thing I told you is the basic foundation of any believers Christian life if you do not know this you will leave God eventually something about the absence now imagine that where, where are you come imagine that this guy just got born again and the next thing he's hearing is a teaching on influence or a teaching on prosperity this guy is going to fail woefully do you know why because it is dangerous to be taught prosperity as a carnal man the flesh will not allow the purity of that message to bless you the message will fall on lust that is already there and it will make this guy a dangerously materialistic person so there is a sequence of growth not every topic is relevant to every believer imagine that this guy gets born again and his first message is love and and life partner and relationship do you know what is going to happen to this guy? He's already dead. Even before the series on relationship is over. Because I can tell you, this guy's prayer life is not going anywhere. This guy's life is not going anywhere. The awareness that there is a beautiful lady to see and marry would not... You think he will pray the way you are praying? That you are praying like a madman, not when you are aware a lady is looking at you. No! How, what if I... I, I miss the moment and the flesh is there deceiving you and you are failing programming woeful failure but if this guy is taught that the beginning of his life is God he can be praying like a madman any lady that does not like that demonstration does not like a profitable destiny yes sir There are people today who cannot pray in tongues because they were taught something before tongues. And what they were taught corrupted their passion, that reckless abandonment. Let me tell you, those days when we started ministry here, you would see the ladies, including hot CC ladies, when it's time to pray, they will roll under the anointing from one point to the other. They will stand up with the whole the whole paraphernalia rumpled to pieces. It matters how we are taught. It matters who, who defines your spiritual value. Who cultivates your hunger and your appetite for the things of God. The keys of the kingdom now i said that because it was important to lay this foundation but in this refresher series my, my goal is really not to touch on these basics now i want to refresh and show us again and i'm praying in the name of jesus christ remember it's this week and next week i'm praying that what you did not see before may you see it now how do i know i have caught light the results the results show that the light has come if the results cannot show with time then the light never came how do I know how can I trust the content of the information I have one of the greatest um, concerns and prayer in my life is not to believe a lie that I should not believe something I hold true and find out after many years that I've been wasting my time believing in a lie. The Bible says to be careful lest what you call light be darkness. There are things people have believed about prosperity that is punishing them today because the content was wrong. There are things people believe about church and ministry and ministry growth today that is making them languish in failure in spite of the fact that they are anointed. There is a, an exact body of knowledge are located for the truths that you desire and I'm going to run through them this week and next week can you lay hands on your head and command that in the name of Jesus your understanding is fruitful lift your voice and pray please pray speak to my mind be open
Hallelujah. Now, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. Let's go back, please. And let's deal with these issues now. Sincerely, it's my prayer in the name of Jesus Christ that we'll hold these keys and we will rise in a way and manner. The mysteries of the kingdom demystify life. They bring you to a point where you see that life is not as complicated as it looks. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Say, I receive it. And whatsoever you bind, the word bind there should not confuse you. Declare to be improper. A particular version says disallow. And then it talks about allowing. Now watch this. Notice the sequence according to Amplify. That it is what has been bound in heaven. You replicate it in the earth. And what has been allowed in heaven, you replicate it. So the keys are keys that allow you to replicate heaven. Remember the sequence is that it be done in the earth as it is in heaven. It is not going to be done in heaven as it is done in the earth. So realities are first finished in the heavenlies and then they are replicated in the earth. The keys of the kingdom. Still amplified Psalm 82. Let's start from verse 5. Still amplified. Very powerful rendition. It says, they know not. Amplified. Amplified. Keep amplified there, please. It says, the magistrate and the judges know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness of complacent satisfaction. And all the foundations of the earth, the fundamental principles upon which rests the administration of justice are shaken. Six. I said you are God since you judge on my behalf as my representatives. Indeed, all of you are children of the Most High. Verse 7. Let's shout it together. One to go. But you shall die as men and fall as one of the princes. So the keys of the kingdom are also the keys of knowledge. The keys of the kingdom are also the keys of knowledge. Specific knowledge that gives us enlightenment and authority. Access to spiritual truth. Access to information, illumination. These are the keys that make for dominion. So the Bible says there are things that have been permitted to walk in the heavenlies. And there are things that are not permitted to walk in the heavenlies. When you obtain the keys of the kingdom in terms of spiritual knowledge and information, they are the keys that activate and deactivate possibilities in the earth realm. These are the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Please understand, I'm teaching now. They are the keys that activate. There are possibilities, but they must be activated through knowledge. And there are possibilities that can be deactivated. For instance, premature death is a possibility. It can be deactivated. Like you detonate a bomb. Are we together? Long life is a possibility, but it's activated. Delay is a possibility, activated. Speed is a possibility activated mediocrity these are all possibilities in the earth realm and so he says i give you keys that means i give you access to i i will bring a file and run through all the possibilities available to mankind choose the ones to activate and set them ablaze in your life and deactivate all the ones you will find some already activated the average believer when he comes into christ when you are born either by territory or culture or ordinances there are possibilities already activated for you they were activated through covenants they were activated through yokes your assignment is to know the keys of the kingdom like a pilot sitting and say no I off this 
I off this. Delaying destiny, I off this. Mediocrity, I off this. I put on the switch of speed. I put on the switch of the anointing. Why am I a pastor with no members? I deactivated. He said, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Please listen very carefully. Please sit down. You will find the possibility of poverty activated and tied there many families to remain so. But you come through knowledge and you find out that this is not a possibility in the economy of God. And you are shown the key to bring it down. And suddenly your life changes. And they say, are you not someone who is associated with this territory? You say, no more. The keys and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Listen, the Bible says, speaking to Abraham, he said, from where thou art, lift up your eyes and see. That means from where you are, you can go anywhere, but there is a key that takes you there. You don't need to go somewhere else. From where you are, your location, your territory, notwithstanding, you can rise from there. Please pay attention because what I show you will disarm principalities and powers. What I show you will tame life and you will play life like a chess. People will only look forward to your downfall as a prophecy that has failed already. You are, you are standing with stability. You are not afraid of your results. They came by light. Let me tell you this. Any dimension you step into not by understanding you will be afraid of the results because the boundaries of the spiritual knowledge that should give you confidence and stability is not there a car comes to you and you are afraid what if it spoils will another one come but there is a body of knowledge that when you know it gives you stability if god says give the car you will give it number one out of faith but number two out of understanding of not just god alone the economy of the system has been opened to you The major assignment of a believer is growth. The major assignment of a believer is enlightenment. Being brought through the power of light to a spiritual dimension where ignorance fades away. Not boastfulness, not arrogance, but you come to a place of stability. I know whom I have believed. Ah. And I am persuaded. See, there are things when you tell me today, it is going to be stupid for me to be worried about. No. Like the future of the ministry, like what makes you believe that in the next five to ten years, the ministry will be standing strong. You see, Fear truly comes because of ignorance. There are things I've found in my life like gems. And I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray, dear ones, in the name of Jesus Christ, that the spirit that enlightens, brings light. May that grace open you up to light. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. See, let me tell you, when you talk, there will be mockers. There will be foolish men who think you are a talkative until you see the unlimited power. These are keys. They are not suggestions. They are keys. They are backed up by God's integrity. They are not backed up by a professor, a governor, a president, a monarch. This is God we are talking about here. Please sit down. I feel sad and respectfully speaking, I submit to you that I feel sorry for any man in our generation today who ignores access to this body of light. He has only signed himself and his generation to a life of pain and tragedy. I don't care who and I don't care what arrogance is back of that ignorance. 
there are truths when you ignore it's a generation that pays for it it's not an individual listen you are hearing the things that you are hearing blessed are your ears revelation says for they hear these things the truths that you are hearing are a word that is coming to jacob and is coming for the sake of israel when god wants to visit israel he finds jacob and sends a word to jacob and it lightens upon israel thou will show me the path of light for in your light we see light who can claim to see when god has not shown you light what are you seeing job 29 and verse 3 job 29 and verse 3 please let's hurry up let's work together media job 29 and verse 3 job is speaking now when his candle did what shined upon where my head not upon my feet the first assignment of the light of god is not your feet is to shine upon your head to take away that darkness that vagueness that assumption it may be an age old age old assumption but it's still an assumption a popular assumption is still an assumption and then he says and by his light i walk through darkness that a man can find his way out of light and you find your way and stand in a position where your life becomes a living wonder not that you walk miracles you are one yourself a living miracle your life is a message whether you are preaching or not this is what god is making you become and listen to me you don't become it just by wish you are exposed to an organized body of spiritual knowledge understand my choice of words not every spiritual information makes men there must be an organized body of spiritual knowledge allocated for the various dimensions of God that you want to see manifest in your life when you learn this let me see the power let me see the cause let me see the yoke let me see the enchantment let me see the divination let me see the scourging tongues of men and the ill wishes of men that sustains the power to keep you down it no longer exists you will know how cheap darkness is when you stand from a point of spiritual illumination it is true that when the light shines in darkness truly the darkness does not comprehend it where we are right now we have to admit it's a product of an inaccurate understanding of the body of knowledge allocated for the results we desire please hear me i'm careful to say this thing because sometimes it looks like pride you hear people prophesy i did this i did this and favor came and for me it's not the testimony do you know what you did and can you do it any result that cannot be reproduced is not a real result you can stumble into results but sustainable results that dumbfound the pride of this arrogant age must come by knowledge apostle you don't understand my situation that's why if you were my shoes no sir i respect your pain but i admit to you your pain is proof of the dominion of darkness let light come and you will watch what happens because every desire that we have there is an allocation an allocation of it based on the word of god and if it is not captured in my life i must admit that there is something i do not know the earlier you admit that there's something you did not know the better for you quickly don't wait till you fail for a long time the moment you start failing stop 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 immediately and say i'm not continuing until i'm sure of what i'm doing that way you will redeem time many people fail for many years they are humbled by life before they have to come back and say okay i didn't get it let me get it now you will thank me for the truths that i share with you you will thank me for the truths that I show you. 
Hallelujah. Now let's explore some keys of the kingdom. Number one. There's part one and there's part two. The first key is found in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Everybody read the first four words. Please shout it as loud as you can. First four words. One, two, read. One more time. One more time. One more time. Last time now. This is the first law. When God does not begin a thing, it has failed. In the beginning of anything, it's not knowledge. In the beginning of anything, it's not skill. In the beginning of anything, it's not connection. In the beginning of anything, it's God. I am Alpha Omega. Don't call me to join something you started. If I do not begin it, my commitment is not there. I show you a powerful secret. In the beginning of your business, God. In the beginning of your marriage, God. In the beginning of your exploits, in the beginning of ministry. This is a secret that has changed my life. Anything God does not start, He will not back. He has to start it as Alpha. Because when He starts it, you will use His methods. You will not use your method and call on Him to back it later. Our proud world today thinks God is only useful for spiritual life. When they want to do business, they take God out. When they want to do ministry, they take God out. Love and relationship, they take God out. Everything, they take God out. But I show you the first four words. Keep it there, please, media. This is the first spiritual law that I want to show you tonight. In the beginning of my life, God. In the beginning of my ministry, not passion, not desire, not assignment consciousness, God. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. I don't see myself, I don't see my achievements. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. There is power in your name. Miracles happen in your name. As we lift our voice in praise, it's you that I see. In the beginning of my marriage or my desire to marry, beauty, you are joking, you will pay for it. The beginning of my desire to marry a macho, handsome guy with a job with NMPC, you will pay for it eventually. In the beginning of my business, intelligence and a well accredited mentorship, you are, you are failed already. The first secret to excelling in life is for God to not be a participant but the alpha of all that you do don't call God to participate in an idea that you finish with yourself you organized it you chose your life partner you chose how many children you will give birth to and you say God come and bless it no God does not work like that you started your business you chose your location by yourself you even bought the first consignment as soon as it arrived Nigeria said Lord here it is it's yours it's not his own you started your ministry, decided where the church will start. You already ordained pastors. You called members. You called everybody and you said, Lord, behold your, 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 your assembly. No, sir. The great know the secret to lifting. They don't move. Moses said, do not send us away from here 
we cannot start this journey oh, if your presence will not go with us we are wasting our time it didn't say if our weapons don't go with us it didn't say if our gold a man that had gold had weapons yet he's saying these things are mundane god if you will not go with me please don't send me how shall they know that we're people that are separated and god says you got it my presence will go with you and i will give you rest the bible says for with god all things for with god not for when you are moving and say okay god why are you leaving me oh yeah now come and hurry up and join and then you say god come no sir no sir no sir lord where are you if you will not lead i'm not going i'm not going lord if you will not lead me in ministry i'm not going is it not written in your bible that if the lord is your shepherd you shall not want now thy rod and thy staff they comfort me he said i am the vine don't be confused we are together but you are the branches you are not the vine i am the vine you are connected to me but you are the branch he distributes it very clearly our dominion is shared dominion not dominion that is derived by our own strength it's a secret that I've worked with in my life. My brothers and my sisters, I have no business going where God is not going. It is not my concern at all. The pressures of life will push you to many things and places where God is not. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. What looks cheap now will be costly when you start paying for it. When we're about to start this ministry, haven't done everything by the Spirit. Three days before Koinonia would start, we had done crusades. We had been in ministry for a while. But before Koinonia would start, I still went back for a retreat. God, please, one more time, are you the one speaking? And are you still leading? I tell you the truth, if God said no, that would be the end of it. He must lead the way. When he leads the way, you will follow. Now, thanks be to God who causes us. Like a blind man. How many of you have seen a blind man walking accurately? It's not because he can see. He's following a man who can see. And the man will lead him. Many people do not know this dimension of God. We start things by emotion. And then we ask God to join when things begin to backfire. And God says, no, 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 no. You're on your own. Start with God in your life and watch your life turn into a sign and a wonder. No matter how bad it looks, if God says, I am there, go. 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 I remember years ago, the things that we now walk in, God said so. And I said, Lord, if you lead, we are going home. And look what God has done. And look what he continues to do. In the beginning, God. Please, return to the place of prioritizing God. Don't use God. Let him lead the way. Many of us only say yes to God if we said yes to it already. You just say, God, just help me confirm. No, you must be flexible. Lord, is this ministry your will? I've been in it for 10 years, but talk to me now. If it is not you, I'm closing it this night. Many of us, our ego will not allow us to be that obedient. Is God speaking to us? In the beginning, God. Let God start your life. So whatever happens, you can say, God, please, I'm here. If God directs you, and grants you approval and you get married to a wife and that lady becomes barren two years three years you have a legal right to go to god with your wife stand with god and say lord you are the one that joined us all we came to you you gave us the right to choose but we returned it to you and we say we don't trust ourselves guide our decision 
and you guided us now the devil is bringing barrenness you put pressure on his integrity and he will have to arise if you call me and you are around maybe a bank somewhere and you say you don't have money and I say pick the bike and come and meet me you told me already you don't have money but I said you should come by the time you come and you cannot pay the bike who will pay for it I ask you to come I must take responsibility for your obedience you will always be afraid to go to God when he did not start with you what will you go and tell God now of course his mess is there but you cannot stand now and say oh God this wife you gave me mm -mm, mm -mm. you were at the beer parlor under the heavy and then on that day you drank unusually and it's from the standpoint of that drunkenness you made a destiny decision and now you have to pay for it of course God is a merciful God and he can restore but the truth is before the restoration comes you'll be paying for it until the word of the Lord came the word tried him look at me please don't be too big to allow God start don't feel my ego is there I'm too intelligent let church not not make me a dull person I'm intelligent I went to school not destiny not destiny you must learn to step back and say oh God of heaven I declare before you sincerely there is nothing that I know moves God like a broken and a contrite heart let God find a man who is genuinely broken and contrite he will veto whatever is wrong and come a broken heart is a real invitation for his presence are we together let me give us one more ah, there are keys so oh. the keys are many you hold them and hang them like a chain a chain of royalty a royal diadem and you move through life you stand by this door you remove one key you open it there are doors you don't just open you break the door so that others can pass too because you can pass and the door will be locked he has broken the gates of brass not opened it broken it and cut the bars of iron in sunder so that others can pass will I pass a door and my child will not pass number two I, are you understanding what I'm teaching you? Please use this. Please use this. God told me something years ago and said, Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. In other words, if like John, you agree to decrease. John said in John chapter 3 and verse 31, he says that I may decrease so that you may increase. And I, if I be lifted up, not you, if you are lifted up you will fall but if I be lifted up from the earth I will draw all men when they bow down to Jesus they also bow down to the donkey that was carrying him when they put the leaves on the ground for Jesus to walk his feet never touched the palm but it was the donkey that carried him who told you when you carry Jesus you fail it's an honor to let the world see him. It's something I've learned in ministry. It's something I've learned in my life. Sincerely, my desire, I tell you, is not for fame. It's not for power. It's not for money. I desire from the depth of my heart to represent the face of God to a generation. To show a generation that it pays to lift the name of the Lord it pays to be passionate over the things of God in a man's lifetime and I remember when God showed me a vision and I saw a generation of men I was standing somewhere no food no water they were crying 
that whole generation and i came to them i said why they said you are the reason and i was afraid to go because a few people were looking for me and i made up my mind that i will go if i perish i perish as soon as i stepped out i saw a giant man and he held my hands he said let's go for you to be lifted all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted all i want is for you for you to be When God begins your life, the passion for fame dies, I tell you. The passion to prove a point, the celebrity obsession dies at once. I want to be known so that I prove to other people I'm not a failure. It's totally unnecessary. Provided in your journey is enough evidence of the hand of God. I tell you why God does not use many people. It's not because they don't pray. It's not because they don't fast. It's not because they are not holy. Because the corruption in their heart, the dimension of obsession for fame, and the, some of you, as you are looking at me like this, if, if a drop of anointing comes on your destiny, God will not hear you again. Everybody must bow down to you. Everybody must kneel down and lie down to greet you. And you will keep the person there for everybody to see. Before you say, now you can stand up, my, my dear son. All this pride that continues to kill men. I tell you why many people do not rise. There are some of us, we have it hidden. Some of us are boastful and outspoken about it. Others are quiet, but it's still there. Waiting for something to bring it out. That, that, that appetite to outshine is a loss that needs to crumble at his presence. In the beginning, God. And at the end of it, God. If nobody ever sees me today, and all they see is God and his mighty works, sincerely I stand before the God of heaven and I tell you I am satisfied. I am. The things that you see and hear God doing through my life and this ministry, I stand and I bless him for it. But let me tell you this. You ask God, he will tell you. I have no business trying to search for fame, apostle Joshua Selman, the great man of God. Thank God for all of those things. But my brothers and my sisters, I'm wise enough to know that without him, I can do nothing. Get to that point in your life where everything about God is your obsession. Don't use God to get fame. Listen, let me tell you, many people leave God to try to get money and you find out how much have you gotten? How much? You have just gotten trouble all around. When God swears over you, to lift you let any obstacle clear that way because even if you are a believer it will crush you when God vows upon a man listen if you can make this vow this night and say Lord I give up this search for to be known now sometimes it's not demonic it's because of our background we came from backgrounds where and some of us our cultures you derive respect from the money the Jeep the car, the house, the moment that is there, they say, ah, you are a real man. Thank God for culture, but please be born again. Please be born again. Don't just be saved, be born again. Subscribe to another culture. Let me tell you this. When you hide behind the cross, that is the way the whole world sees you. The secret to your being seen is he's being seen when they see Jesus they have to see you my life is a testimony my brothers and my sisters hear what I teach you and be wise 
and rise from this mediocrity in life it does not start with just intellect there is a place for all these things but don't forget these first four words that start your Bible in the beginning God not in the middle then God comes <clears throat> in the beginning God this is how I run my life it is God who everything I have belongs to him you never hear me say you only hear me say my thing just in terms of responsibility but God knows if he started the beginning then anything I find there is his own before I came my house is his own my cars his own the influence his own the fame his own the anointing his own I'm only a steward and I remain a steward forever and the Bible says moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful I show you why only few people ever rise in a generation it's not Rema it's not miracles you can walk every miracle you know and be shocked that your influence never grows you can have every revelation you have and move in dimensions of power never seen and be shocked that people receive your miracles and still despise you. Let all the other names fade away. Let that be your prayer. Let every other name fade away. Till there's only you every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. Every other name fade away. Listen down. Let's start the second. The second is almost a master key, except that it submits to God too. The second is almost a master key. Listen, listen. What I'm about to share with you now will take away worry from your life. This worry about what to eat. This worry about what to wear. This worry about how you will become famous. It will fade completely and live your life. This is a revision series. You may not have gotten it the last time, but please get it now. Success is not pursued. Success is not pursued. Success is not what you look for. You will never find it. Success was designed to come just like fate. Just like fate, comet. You don't pursue faith. Uh -uh. You don't pursue success. Please hear me. Success is what is attracted to you by reason of who you are becoming. Not what you are doing. Who you are becoming. Please understand this spiritual law and stop wasting your time looking for mundane things that will never come. Success is not what you pursue. Seeking success is a cause. Spending your life looking for it is a cause. Are we together? Now, please look up. Let me teach. Um, come, gentlemen. Let me have six or eight gentlemen. Sit down, Pastor Alfon. Sit down. Please come. Sit down. You come quickly so that we we'll save time. Just stand this way. Stand facing me. Space yourselves. Thank you. Thank you. And you stand. Um, my friend, you stand here. Watch this, everybody. Thank you. Now, please watch this. Call all of these people the needs of men. Say the needs of men. One more time, please shout it. Say the needs of men. Call. Sam is looking sharp. Call this financial prosperity. You are all looking sharp, eh? My dear people, you are all looking sharp. Now, watch this. Call this financial prosperity. That's what you are looking for. Are we together? Call this marital peace. Oh, how we need it. Marital peace. 
Are we together? Call this influence and fame. We need it too. Social media world, we need it a lot. Likes and follows. Call this speed. Are we together? Call this, what do you call this? Favor. Ah, koinonia. Favor. Favor. And then call this impact. Now watch this. This is me. Help me. Starting out my life with zero possibilities. Zero possibilities. Now watch this. Did you know how frustrating it would be for me, ladies and gentlemen, to start pursuing these things one by one? These six only represent the uncountable needs that represent success to men. And we think that the way to become successful is to isolate these things one by one and begin to seek them. That burden is too much. An intelligent God will not design success that way. Are we together now? So when you pursue success, it means if you are to spend 120 years on earth, you spend 30 years seeking, no money is even a lifetime, you spend 30 years seeking a wife or a husband, another how many years seeking all of these things, your lifetime together will not allow you to get them. This is the cause of the fallen man. To seek things one by one. Jesus rebuked people again and again for seeking things. He says, the Gentiles run after these things. They run after. They run after. But your heavenly father knows that ye have need of it. Now watch this. This is how God designed the kingdom. I pray for you that you will get this once and for all. Now watch this. At this level, notice my prayer. I'm a prayer warrior. Oh God, open the windows of heaven. Finances, give me finance. Oh God, a good wife, good children. I will never give birth to an armed robber. I won't give birth to a thief. At this level, your prayer is valid. Because there are many things you do not know. Father, grant me favor in the name of Jesus. Lord, grant me fame. Grant me speed. And I'm praying. And sometimes I'm tempted to leave God to quickly get them. Now watch this. All these guys represent levels. Everybody say levels. They represent dimensions. Say dimensions. For every level I get to, designed by God, are the possibilities already allocated to gravitate towards my growth at that level. So human beings are inversions. Are we together now? There is a version of me that cannot be a millionaire. No. It is God's law that will stop that version from being a millionaire. It's not an attack. If I pray to be a millionaire, God will answer me by providing the growth that takes me to the realm where that possibility was allocated. Please understand what I'm teaching you. Now, the challenge with believers is that we stay where we are and we try to use prayer to, what are you called? Impacts. Now, I'm here oh, full of ignorance and pride. And yet, I want to make Benny Hinn's impact. And I borrowed the impact for two weeks like a rubber ring. What happens? It will leave me again. Anything that does not come to you because of your growth must leave you. It will leave as losses it will live as armed robbers it will live as thieves forget about the actors there is a law that compels that any level that you any object you get that does not resonate with your growth must leave you it's a law i show you the laws of the kingdom i show you the way we grow now watch this these guys are standing here. Now, gentlemen, this is what I want you to do. For every step I take forward, you two take a step forward. Are, are we together? Now, watch this. I am here and I was invited to come for Koinonia. A broke, confused, wearing my smelly cloth. All I know is God. And I have the, the opportunity to sit under a heavy anointing and mentorship. And now I am taught certain things. Watch this. As the word of God is shining upon my mind, I may not know what I'm doing, 
but I'm taking a step and the things I'm looking for are also taking a step are you seeing that now all at once or this is what will happen step back when I step to your level you step forward are we together now watch this I am here right now and I move forward and these guys come now notice without prayer some results start coming because I grew there now my eye is here and it's good to look far but it's not going to come to your life listen hold on let me teach you something if Papa E.A. Adeboye today empties his account this night before 12 noon millions will come back I will tell you why it's not because there are givers it's not because he's a man of God when the money disappears the law of God will send a signal to heaven that this growth level should not have this kind of account reflect the justice system of God must balance that destiny this is what physics has tried to describe a long time ago that there is a system of balance in life it is not a lie please understand this now watch this I sit down here as a confused Christian and if I'm not properly mentored I quickly come here and lie down on someone's BMW and just say it is mine if you mean it is yours with the law of process and engaging this you are right but you mean you want it now even if they give you now there is a system design that will take it from you see let me tell you it is why many people never hold on to things sustainably they have balloon success they open up today and shrink back again there were certain things that it would be stupid for me to desire 10 years ago 15 years ago no growth brought it so i'm growing Shakaba Katosia, praying every day as i'm learning a key as i'm sowing seeds as i'm building look at what i'm doing it's moving towards me moving towards me are you seeing that now a time will come where everything that i see come gentlemen i will be immersed in my possibilities I can no longer leave them it will not make a difference again whether I give or don't give financially speaking I've entered a realm of financial equilibrium where what goes and what comes it doesn't make a difference the only thing is just my faith with God but at this level when I give I will know it I will know something left me now watch this let me tell you what God is doing to you every week you are coming you are right here you may not know what is happening Listen to me, please, just be sensitive and pay attention. You may not know what it is that is happening to you, but this is the law of God. Man of God, don't sit back just admiring everybody. While you are praying, you are learning the principles, you are learning leadership. What you are doing is you are walking through life. What you are looking for is also looking for you. What you are looking for is also looking for you a day will come by the spirit of god hear me please that day except god is not god a day will always come that includes the anointing watch this call these dimensions of the anointing my brothers you cannot stand at this level and want to operate in the anointing and the spirit at this level no matter what impartation all this double portion prayer of course is just a sincere prayer by well-meaning people even the man of god knows it's not double portion that came on that person he just fell down so that it's just hunger that was imparted to go back to the secret place this is where benny Hinn started and he kept growing he kept growing he has to touch everybody here for them to be imparted and he will be tired from hours of personal ministration but as he stepped up he got to a level where his word became his hands it can reach people and touch them it doesn't matter where now watch this at this level the anointing will not move till you play the keyboard clash the cymbal charge everywhere till there is prayer till the people fast till their hearts are open he thinks that's how god operates until he comes higher you get to a realm where someone can be doubting you and still go under the anointing. He does not believe you. He even hates you, yet he's rising from a wheelchair. So what took him up?
for every time you backslide this is what happens every time you are offended and angry i won't go to church again i'm tired this is what you are doing to yourself shifting you father sincerely this thing i'm acting is how destiny works let me tell you this business people hear me if you believe that you will imaginarily stumble into millions just by meeting a business or an investment or become just stumble into it you are joking it will leave you it is only growth that has the power to keep any possibility so the way we succeed is not what we do it is who we become there is a version of me that should not be inside an aircraft if I enter an aircraft the aircraft will throw me out are we together there is a version of me that should not have a car if I want a car I don't look for a car I grow into the realm where a car was allocated so when I'm here watch this in this realm as provided by God there should be cars and there should be houses if God says so your car and you give it the realm itself will look for a replacement it is God's system. There is a level that you stand, you will never have more than 500 members. It doesn't matter how many days you fast, you cannot have it. Your mind and your growth does not allow it. You can stand and be offended. The more you insult a man that has a crowd and say, what is crowd? This is what you are doing to your own results. You are authorizing the realm of the spirit to reject you when those possibilities come near you. But when you stand and grow and say, Lord, what did you show them? As the light of God is shining upon your head, you are moving from obscurity, from mediocrity. Please understand what I teach you. This is how the great rise. That's why they are not afraid of their growth. They did not jump. They grew and Jesus increased. Listen, let me tell you this. Forget about poverty and forget about all of these things. I'm not saying don't pay attention to them. Do you know you will grow and not know when this realm, the possibilities there left you? Which tailor will sew my cloth? Oh, you go around looking for a tailor, you will die looking for a tailor. Just grow. The tailor is waiting for the renewed version of you. There is a realm where a tailor has been kept to adorn you. Did Joseph look for the person who would put his garment? Was he not in the prison? The garment maker was waiting for the renewed version of him. There are many things you are praying for now that have been answered already in your growth. Let me get a jeep. What is jeep, my brothers and my sisters? Don't mock the investment of the spirit upon your life. When you know this, anybody that receives a miracle, it's like the hand of a clock rotating. You start rejoicing because it's the same thing you are hearing. And you know that your turn is coming. See, let me tell you. Come. When you stand at this realm and people begin to pray and say, we know that one day it will go down. This money will go down. The crowd, you see the foolishness of the imagination of weak men. You are not here by luck. The justice of God is what backs the result at this level. The only thing God can do with you is to vet you based on his eternal standard. But as far as these things live in you, it will never go again. The only thing is that your system of accreditation and growth and vetting is not these things. No matter how God punishes you, please hear me, these things will not leave. The only way these things will leave is when you go back. And you cannot undo what you already know. That is the reason why Lucifer, the light bearer, can still make you prophesy. Can still make you wealthy. Lucifer, you can go to Satan because he stood in a position as the exalted light bearer of God. And there were possibilities that were tied to his office. When he fell, the possibilities did not go. The knowledge is still with him. Therefore, the results still continue to come. It is true. It is true. 
there is a version of Jesus that 5,000 men could not come to. Not the baby in the manger. Not the 12-year-old Jesus. Not even the 30 unbaptized Jesus. There was a version of Jesus that creation was waiting for. And the Father told that version, creation, now hear ye this version. Not the version in the tabernacle. Hear me. Everything you are looking for is looking for you. But not this version of you. So once and again, your future keeps coming to you and checking if you are there. And returns back and says, we have not yet seen him. Your future is answering God. So the Bible says creation is waiting. Waiting for the manifest. Creation keeps checking. Are they there? He says they are not yet there. But when you grow, you will grow to a realm where creation will now see the manifestation of the sons of God. Please hear me. There is a version of this ministry that we cannot go to at this level. No. There is a level of grace and power and intelligence and knowledge. The future of this ministry is already waiting. Checking for us and saying Koinonia has not arrived. In that future, Koinonia is not yet there. If we stop here, God will have to make do with what is available. But that's not what would have been. So when we continue to grow, a day will come, this building will start driving us. This building, like a living thing, will start saying, go out. Go out of this environment. And the environment waiting for us will start saying, come, you are ready. There is a way you will grow that the house you are staying now will drive you. It must drive you. The key is not to start looking for another house. The key is to wait. You will know you are ready when the house starts driving you. There are clothes you are wearing today that will run away. You will not give it. You will not sew it, but you will not find it. The same way you could not find the former ones you are wearing. Where were they? Where are they now? The clothes you wore 10 years ago, where is it? You did not pack it in a bag and sold it. Where did it go to? Please understand what I teach you. These are the secrets that the Lord brought to me and gave me rest. I don't chase things. You can stay from your room and like a magnet attract anything from the globe. Provided it is on earth, they will walk like the animals. This was the strategy that brought the animals to the ark of Noah. The animals were in the bush. If Noah went looking for them one by one, he would die there. I show you this from scripture. Noah built the ark. The moment the ark was ready, this law started calling the animals. One by one, they started marching. If animals came to the ark, your money is on earth, but the hand to collect it is not this hand. There is a hand that is trained by the Lord. When you lift it from all over the earth, it will come. There was a time in this ministry, I'm rounding up, we didn't have a domiciliary account. Not because we didn't see the need to. We just felt no problem when the time comes we'll cross. Do you know how we opened a domiciliary account? I'm just giving you an example in this ministry. I was somewhere when the manager of GT Bank here, the manager called me and he said, sir, I need to talk to you. I'm the manager of GT Bank. I said, okay, no problem. And then I spoke with him and he said, someone, people have been trying to make transfers, international transfers. And here and there, they change it to Naira and send it. But that mm -mm, the, the, is becoming overwhelming. And one did not care whether you have an account or not. He sent the money and the money has been hanging with no account to credit it. And he said, please, can we open an account? That was a sign. I said, we have gotten there. We have gotten to that level. If I open a domiciliary account 20 years ago for the ministry or 15 years ago, let me tell you what will happen. It will keep being dormant. You will reopen, dormant, reopen, dormant, reopen until the day your growth gets there, then you call it breakthrough. It was not just breakthrough. It was growth. Ah, rejoice not over me, my enemies. What you are mocking me with is in my future. I just need to grow there. My brothers and sisters, hear me. What is a house that it should intimidate you? What about the paint cannot be manufactured again? What about the space? Just be patient and grow. 
when you get to that point you will grow there you can pass through life and keep drawing results like a rubber ring they will shoot back and leave you in shame i choose the way of growth there are levels this ministry has not gotten to i'm not ashamed we will stay honorably and grant god grace to take us there but when we get there there is a level we get to where the satellites will start calling and say come 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 at that level you will find out that five or six business partners will come and say apostle we are paying for the tv station of this ministry for 10 years you know growth by the ease it brings when there is unnecessary suffering and difficulty sometimes it's not just pushing through by faith is that you are forcing life to deliver a result you have not gotten yet amazing the things i so desired in my life and the way they come now that you cannot even drive them these are the keys of the kingdom so you can stay from one room and your mind is in an estate not just by wishful thinking you can stay as a man of god and everybody is despising you they are not seeing the grace of god upon your life don't worry you don't have to move around with cards and saying do you know i'm anointed I've been watching you you are acting as if i'm not a man of god don't worry let me tell you if you remain in the same position it is not just an attack it is proof that you are not growing you know you are growing by the possibilities that start leaving and others that start coming there are things your yesterday should leave you for your tomorrow to come if your yesterday follows you into your today you are still in yesterday knowledge very quickly before I pray for you, I want to give you four areas that I believe every believer that wants to do mighty things through and in God in this season must be able to access. Write it down quickly. Number one, in the beginning, God, any believer that wants to be mighty, you want to walk in the anointing, you must have a revelation of God. You must know who God is. You can know about me by reading my books, but you have to meet me to know me. And the Bible tells us that Jesus has come as the expression of the fullness of the image of God. So as I study the life of Jesus Christ, I have an understanding of who God is. You see, the Bible is a compendium of God revealed in different dimensions so that as I study the Bible and as I trust the presence of the Holy Spirit to reveal the reality of Jesus to me certain things about God listen if you are coming for koinonia right now and someone stops you by the road and says apostle said koinonia will now hold in PZ you're not going to listen to that person because that communication based on me that you know that communication is not consistent with how I will behave if there is a need to change venue we have a more intelligent system of communicating it is that true so because of your access to the knowledge of me you know what is not me is that true but if you are a visitor who is coming for the first time never seen me and someone stopped you and said look i think you need to reverse you will go in obedience but you are obeying a wrong information so it's not just obedience it has to be obedience to the right thing there are too many people who are obedient to wrong informations and then they say lord i'm obedient <laughs> you must understand god and understanding jesus christ together with everything that redemption brings and together with every reality that comes today in christ this is the foundation for the victory of a believer you must be able to know who god is what jesus christ represented while he walked on the earth and what he means to you now and the quality of life we have discussed it what the bible calls eternal life remember I told you it's not eternal life everybody has eternal life everybody has everlasting life that rendition is the best of the translators eternal life is a possibility once you are born the parable of the rich fool and Lazarus they all left this realm to another dimension of living 
and they were all alive could speak so everyone has eternal life and then zoe i told us let me just do a, a quick recap that zoe is not just a life superior to the human life because there are many lives that are superior to the human life money alone can create a possibility in your life where the quality of your life becomes higher than that of an average human being you don't have to be born again just that quality are we true divination can open you up to certain possibilities in the spirit where your life becomes higher in quality than that of a human life but it's not eternal life it was john that described to us he said this life is a derivative of an encounter with a person if for any reason you find out that you are living in a higher dimension of living above the normal human life but is outside of an encounter with a person your life is higher than a human life but it is not the way and this life is in his son he that hath the son hath that life you must know this because that light that enters you is what becomes your life that's what immunes you so you are able to manifest possibilities that are not privy to the average human being then you will know that it's possible to walk in health it's not just a, a, an issue of i won't be sick uh -uh, it's not just jacking yourself in empty confusion confession no then you will know that you are able to rise above situations and circumstances not just by empty confession but an experience that is now your reality number two quickly the second dimension of knowledge that i think we need is the knowledge of the holy spirit the holy spirit the holy spirit very few people truly know the holy spirit many people know about him there are all kinds of theological exegesis about him you must know his person and you must know his ministry jesus took out time in john 14 15 16 to introduce us to this personality called the holy spirit and the bible makes us to understand that the success of jesus was entirely because of the spirit of god it's impossible to be mighty upon the earth ignoring him receiving the baptism of the holy spirit is not knowing the holy spirit praying in tongues is not knowing the holy spirit walking in miracles is not knowing the holy spirit the holy spirit is a person you can know him you can understand his ministry what a joy your life will be a wonder when you know the holy spirit are we together you must know the holy spirit especially if you are in ministry listen i have learned by the grace of god and by experience that the absence of certain things can never be replaced by certain others oratory will never replace the absence of the holy spirit are we together going to school and reading well will never replace the person and the ministry of the holy spirit kneeling down and asking people to give you impartation will never replace a personal press for an encounter and a knowledge with the holy spirit miracle signs and wonders will never replace him you can fake power you can't fake his presence are we together you must press to know the holy spirit i study god's generals and every time i have an opportunity to look at materials that make reference to them one thing was common between them regardless of their limitations and their temperaments they really knew him and their knowledge of the spirit brought accuracy in their lives they did mighty things that we are blessed you must know the holy spirit the holy spirit is not a personality to be known by men of god and miracle workers no the Holy Spirit is not a personality that should be known by apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors. No. The Holy Spirit is the key to living. And when he, the spirit of truth, is come, the Bible says he will guide you into all truth. He will guide you. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. 
Can you pray one minute and say, Holy Spirit, reveal yourself to me? Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever serve you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever follow. Lord, I will seek you in the morning. I will learn to walk in your ways. Four step, step by, by step, step, you lead me. And I will follow you all of my life. That's where we are bankrupt. No direction. We guess our lives and do everything. Time. And your lifetime is, is too small for error. Your lifetime is too small for repeated mistakes. There must be a system in God for accuracy. In ministry. In family life. Your vocation. Whatever it is. You cannot live your life just based on science. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But there is a personality. For step by step. You lead me. I admit I'm ignorant. But step by step, you lead me, and I will follow. That's my part. I won't be too ignorant. I won't be too arrogant. When he leads me, I follow. Maybe a stupid instruction, but I'm too young to question him. He's the spirit of the Father. I trust him. You trusted a lecturer who is less than 20 years older than you. You trusted a man who called himself your father. Not more than 30 years older than you. And here comes one who was in the beginning. The first personality of the Trinity revealed. And he comes to hold your hands. And he said, look, I took a very frail man called Moses. And I guided him. Brothers and sisters, this thing is not just skill and talent alone. It's the foolishness of submission to a personality. Not a power. Not just an influence a person some of us have foolishly followed him for years with stupid instructions admitting our ignorance in the the midst of a proud world oh god you are my god just the same and i will never praise you oh god you are my God and I will ever praise you I will seek you in the morning I will seek you in the morning and I will learn to walk in your ways for step by step And I will follow all of my days. From tonight, step by step, you lead you. And I will follow you all of my days. The Holy Spirit was with, was with God when they were discussing your destiny. It's a foolish thing to not need Him in building it. No. If I was responsible for designing a curriculum and you ignore me when it comes to execution, it is called pride. I was in my mother's womb when he designed me. I called you. I ordained you. So you walk with me and say, Holy Spirit, I don't know my way. I don't know my way. Many people claim it's their power and their might. Many people claim I understand church planting. Many people claim I know how to be a man of God. But can you humble yourself and press for the knowledge of him? 
the knowledge of the Holy Spirit will require time and it will require submission one thing I know about the Holy Ghost is he hates arrogance the Holy Spirit hates arrogance when he comes to you you are not colleagues he's not in you as a tenant he's in you as the landlord what will happen tonight brothers and sisters is credited to him it is him that reveals Jesus here look how many of us have wasted time listen to me I'm speaking to you there are many of us seated here you would have been working in your destiny already five years from now but this stubbornness of of not listening to him oh holy I, 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 all these church things no he told you go and serve in church by now certain things in your life would have gone ah. we wait on you Lord we wait on you I wait on you Lord we wait on you I wait on you Lord I wait on you I wait on you That's what I've done with my life. That's what we've done with Koinonia. Fill this temple with your presence. Hey, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. We wait on you. Lord, we wait. Open up my destiny. You are the only one who can open up my destiny. Take it higher, Mike. Let me tell you, look at me. At whatever level you are, just walk with him. You may have no iota of unction right now. Forget about anointing. Be foolish enough to hold him. Let him lead you. Let others go. Just walk with him. You may be behind, but brothers and sisters, there is an unction. He will put something upon your life that will shake the nations and take away the boastings of men. God is never too slow with men. Never too slow. If he's the one that kept you, know you are faster, faster than anything you can imagine. Faster. There are many arrogant pastors claiming that they want to do ministry, but they ignore him. They like human connection, but they leave him alone. I will never forget, years ago, the Spirit of God will keep me and said son never try to rush anything just walk with me just walk with me like he's telling someone now don't rush your life i know you think everybody has gone ahead of you don't rush that marriage don't rush that thing walk with him one day with him will cover 10 years of mistakes walk with him apostle i have no job just walk with him just walk with him. If you were working five years ago, all your salary put together would not be more than six million. Walk with him. Gosh. The Holy Spirit. Fortunately, from next week, I'm starting a series. The Lord has allowed me to take a series. We're taking a series on the Holy Spirit. A complete... I will share with you very deep things that I've not shared with many people. The Holy Spirit. You ignore him as a businessman because you believe you are intelligent. I went to Harvard. You ignore him as a father because you think I'm not a small child. Hi. Will I ever be able to leave him? I know you are looking at me. It's because I'm the, I'm the part of the deal that is visible. 
but behind me I'm not too smart to produce the results that you see I'm not ashamed of it oh. there is one who is mighty mighty there is an infinite wisdom behind everything you see if it is the Lord's doing remember then it must be marvelous if it's a man's doing then it is natural scientific but the moment it becomes marvelous it is the Lord's doing you are marvelous yeah. you are marvelous yeah. hey. you are marvelous yeah. by scarcity when you study developmental economics value is defined by what scarcity the ability of a thing to not be available everywhere the most scarce thing is whatever cannot be found on earth that's what he gives you as your reward anointing is not something you get just by fasting anointing is God's reward for trusting him for working with me I give you something that money cannot buy for walking with me I give you something that builds you out of shame and inferiority I know you came from a background where nobody knew you and you were foolish enough to walk with me then I give you an unction they may criticize you but you don't deny proofs brothers and sisters no sir I'm trusting that God will make someone's life marvelous. The key, listen, the key is not running around. The key is staying. Martha, you are worried and offended about many things. But one thing is needful. Oh God, I should have had five children now. Don't you know he can give you one child that is like a nation? Oh God, I've been crying about that job. When we talk about intimacy with God, many busy people think it's a waste of time. No, no, no. Look, I teach us some. No. No. If I followed that route, I would have been a failure today. A big failure. I'm not ashamed. You are the power in me. You are the fire at work in me. You are my ever-present helper, Holy Spirit. I... How do you stand and look at someone with a growth and take away that growth? Just like that? How do you look at someone who is dead? And bring the person back to life there are people here now with situations that doctors have written you off even a charm cannot solve it you need a commodity that is not available in the earth I told you the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference in a few minutes from now 10 years problems will just leave just like that no 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 that's what happens when you value him that's what happens that's what happens listen when you honor a man of god you don't just honor a body you honor the sacrifice the sacrifice of alignment that has caused that man to be able to hold certain dimensions of possibility listen to me all men are not equal no sir it's, it's a very harsh statement but it's the truth we are equal in Christ but our sacrifices and the election of grace has separated men to cadres based on the possibilities they can host ignoring that reality will be to the doom of a man the Holy Spirit we are going to begin to pray but I, 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 I just four things the Holy Spirit you don't know him you are in trouble 
you will be faced by too many things that your age cannot solve you didn't study everything you had a degree in an area having a degree in engineering or in medicine is not having a degree in wisdom no sir that information is too small to define the quality of your life ministry you need him you want to succeed in life you don't just need information you need a person hallelujah holy spirit it's grace and glory i trust that god will initiate people into that dimension of grace of intimacy with the holy spirit hallelujah yes the holy spirit is speaking to me and he's saying there are seven people here right now that he wants to call like a call into intimacy seven people seven people seven people shalabran miskala shabras kele brahas call your people oh god sun initiation into a dimension of intimacy the sister outside for he will be real to you real to you by his spirit this is not an issue of jamboree it's not an issue of feeling anointed it's working with a person it will make your life a wonder a wonder a wonder he will make your life a wonder he will not just give you anointing he will walk with you walk with you so you become an effulgence of that grace then you can say that which we have seen that which we have heard that which our hands have handled Thank you oh my father for giving me your son and leaving your spirit in your work in my life is done I thank you Oh my father for giving me your son and me your spirit your word on earth Please sit down if you can. The third thing that you must know is you must understand the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom. Please, I want you to be very sensitive. We'll soon arise to pray. Sensitive. Ah, I just saw something jumping out of a lady. Jumping out of a lake. Let it be the end of it. Let it be the end of it. Let it be the end of it. Forever faithful towards me. Will always provide for me. Praise your mercy towards me. Praise your Take 
higher mic. Let's just allow the Holy Spirit to flow. Something is happening now. The Lord is showing me a map. You know this happens. And I'm seeing Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna. Right now the anointing is touching Southern Kaduna people. Southern Kaduna. This is what I see in the spirit. Southern Kaduna. Shakatabaskobaska. Southern Kaduna. This is what I see in the spirit. You're from that place. An unction. An unction. I see a map in the spirit. Southern Kaduna. Let the hand of God step into that dimension. It's not a miracle. It's a sign and wonder. It's a demonstration of a dimension of the spirit. Everyone from Southern Kaduna comes under the influence of this grace. Southern Kaduna. Shabrakatos kelabrande katai. Leketekos sotopadia. Lift them, oh God. I hear my spirit lifting. Lifting, lifting. He's raising you. Raising you by his spirit. Raising you. There is an unction that makes this possible. Raising you by his spirit. I hope I'll be able to finish this. The mysteries of the kingdom. That's the third thing that you must seek to know. Not just the word of God. Not just Rema. The mysteries. There is a lady in overflow. Three. One is here. Two is the one by the road. Three is the one by the empty land. There is a lady overflow. Three. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming upon her. Please, I want, I want her to come. Overflow. Three. I'm seeing like an arrow right from this building. Right down there. Please sit down. Let's hurry up so that we can do a quick walk. There are so many people. You must access the mysteries of the kingdom. Everybody say mysteries. A mystery is a secret code of operation. The kingdom of God operates based on systems. And you see, these mysteries contain in them the revelations of God the revelations of God alongside the dimensions of his power. I've taught us here that there are two dimensions of God's power. The first dimension of God's power is enshrined in mysteries and principles. The second dimension of God's power is enshrined in a relationship. Two dimensions of God's power. So you don't have to be born again to experience the first dimension. The moment a principle is consistent with the character of God, it will release a dimension of the power of God like tithing like sowing and reaping like being responsible like mentorship all of these are principles in the kingdom that are backed up by god's own character you must access the principles of the kingdom therein lies the key to your dominion it is a terrible thing to be in the face of life and not know what to do you must know what to engage for the outcomes you desire Can you tell me you understand the mystery that governs restoration? You know restoration is a possibility in the kingdom. But what is the code of operation that is responsible for releasing that dimension of possibility? Because the Bible lets us know that both the years and even substances that a man loses can come back. But do you understand that there is a system in the kingdom that can make that possible? Are we together? Do you understand that there is a system in the kingdom that can make a sick person healthy? Yes, you know that divine healing is a possibility. But what controls it? Laying on of hands? No! No! Laying on of hands is just a channel. The inner workings is the spiritual understanding that backs that. Are we together now? You have to understand the power of God is released through light. Remember the scripture Habakkuk. There was the hiding place of his power. Are we together? When you understand that, you don't have to lay hands on men to heal them. It doesn't even have to be a miracle service. The very understanding you have 
will respond to a man's need the same way if i stand with you and i have say tuberculosis you're a doctor doctor if i have tuberculosis and you stand near me must i believe in you to receive it no listen to me carefully are we together now i'm standing close to you it vetoes whether i agree with you i can even be insulting you but that's none of the business of the tuberculosis once there is proximity it will enter you you will live angry but you must receive it so if i can transfer sickness why can i not transfer health are you seeing that now that means i can stand close to you and transfer something from me to you life being the light of men you see that that's the concept of whatsoever is born of god not whosoever whatsoever is born of god can overcome not by jacking yourself and understanding grants you access to that dimension in the spirit where you can walk in it so you can come with a challenge you can come with a sickness like some of you are here now trusting god all kinds of impossible situations they've told you it cannot be solved they are right based on their understanding this is a doctor they are not wrong based on their understanding but god's god's manifold wisdom introduces possibilities you see he says with god with god watch this i've taught you alone it is impossible but with god with god alone i cannot call but with my phone with in partnership with god all things all things all things are possible i want you to look at the situation we came here with for the last time tonight because in the name of the lord god of heaven it will go hmm. my assignment tonight is to bring it face to face with the power that created the universe not the power that governs nigeria not the power that governs un the power that created the heavens and the earth for he upholds all things by the word of his power number three that's it there mysteries so number one you must know god number two that's redemption and everything that concerns god in the person of jesus number two you must understand the ministry of the holy spirit the third thing you must have access to the word you must crave for accurate understanding number four this is a mystery i believe that has been known by very few and i truly believe with all my heart that is one of the things that god has anointed me to reveal is the mystery of the body the fourth thing you must know if you want to excel is you must understand the mystery of the body of christ this strategy called the body of christ the body of christ is not just people the body of christ many people say the body of christ is not just a church there are people the body of christ is not people the body of christ is a strategy the only strategy capable of birthing the purposes of god is called ecclesia the body of christ the body of christ is not a people it's a strategy that's why he said i will build it i will build it he didn't say i will make it i will build it like a formula like a plan and i will build it in such a way that it will be so formidable the gates of hell will not prevail against it there is a formation that the body of christ is built it is so formidable the gate of hell can only touch members not the body the body was built by a system that cannot be touched by the gate of hell are we together never forget this many people have been robbed of the full dimension of the power of god first corinthians 11 verse 30 remember for this cause many are weak many are sickly it is for these causes there is only one reason why people are not able to rise to represent the fullness of god he said for this cause many are weak limited for this cause many are sickly and for this cause many sleep 
when was the last time you went for funeral and they told you somebody died because he did not discern the body that's what killed him please pay attention get my teachings discerning the body that whole series you have to listen if you are in ministry here or you are a church leader a deacon you have to listen to it if not you will never rise a body has thou prepared for me it was prepared to be used a formidable strategy that beats hell hands down it's called the body of christ everything is available in the body listen carefully so if it is not available in your life it is available in the body you have to learn that any possibility my life is not manifesting does not define the possibility of god it is only the possibility of my experience but that reality is available are we together now yes son of man can these bones live and ezekiel said this is not a possibility within my frame of reality he says let me show you the body the body this body is a mystery it was built with a formula christ being the chief cornerstone immediately after christ two strange ministries the apostolic and the prophetic then the building rises you must follow that formula to be formidable it is the building of the body so when you see a man telling you you don't need any man in your life don't depend on any man it's only god they are sincere in that they are trying to balance human worship but that's a destructive revelation that will kill you because please listen to my message i'm just doing a quick recap because i'm telling you the things to study we'll begin to pray listen carefully i told you that there are mantles and there are systems remember the teaching yes a system represents a covenant with god that releases a dimension of his possibility within the dispensation of that civilization it's called a system so in every dispensation there is a way and manner god wants to be known and the way he advances that knowledge of him is through covenant your relationship with god your spiritual growth is based on relationship but kingdom advancement is based on covenant so when god wants to release a dimension of him to a generation he finds a man listen he enters a covenant with that man that for as long as that man is alive he represents the spiritual system for releasing that possibility to that dispensation no one alive in that dispensation will taste of that dimension of god without believing or in alignment to that system this is how the kingdom is abraham represents the system of the blessing the journey of a believer's blessing starts from him system are we together now elijah represents god's system of purifying and preparing men for revival elijah is not a man elijah is a system i've taught you this the first manifestation of the spirit of elijah was seen in noah elijah always precedes the great and terrible day of the lord the moment there is a visitation upon a people elijah must come that's why elijah is still alive god's apostolic and prophetic system that prepares men for revival for the move of god is called elijah is a system the man elijah died he's simply a man named after the system the system continues the antichrist is a system not just a person you see that peter a system that represents faith systems on earth today there are men who are not just human beings but systems when you trace the ministry of the holy spirit it can start from anywhere you choose upon the earth today right now it will end with benny Hinn. you see that benny Hinn is not carrying a mantle he's a system he represents that possibility no one will enter into the healing ministry without honoring what he represents to the body this is called the mystery of discerning the body kenneth copeland today represents god's system of faith and prosperity start from any point in the world you will start moving from mantle to mantle grace to grace and it will land back in him there are many systems like that 
you will never get this through prayer and fasting no matter how you pray God will lead you to those people he will give you encounters but he will lead you there is a system I have provided it is your alignment with that system that will produce those possibilities how much of the body do you know imagine what would have happened into your life now if you could discern the body discerning the body is different from destiny helpers destiny helpers are not systems destiny helpers they may not even be born again they are just people that god anoints to help you get to your destiny there are bodies terrestrial and there are bodies celestial he says even among the stars one different from another in glory not in shape in glory hallelujah praise the lord if you had discernment for the body you probably would have been healed since if you had discernment for the body you probably would have been blessed since many people want to be rich but they criticize those who represent the systems that deliver that possibility there is no amount of prayer and fasting that will bring you into that possibility because when you scorn the grace that represents that reality you authorize that door to close it only opens to honor not even seats honor if your seat sowing is a communication of that honor then it opens are you seeing that now i can't criticize papa Ia Deboy and bishop oyedeko and one crowds and multitudes is impossible carry posters everywhere it will not happen there is a system this is not publicity it's a spiritual reality so in honor of what they represent i am authorized to access that reality that's why you are here tonight let me tell you something listen carefully you see this thing you call koinonia koinonia is not a ministry koinonia is a system you have to believe this it's a system it's not a movement it's not a fellowship it's not a group it's a system it's a system that has become a portal to release certain possibilities of God I, I want you to be very hopeful so that when you come you don't have to be afraid there is something about the atmosphere so no matter how far you are you have come to Mount Zion certain things happen this is not just some human bragging a man of God trying to shine his ministry no tonight you're standing face to face with possibilities that are contained in God please listen to me you're standing face to face with a reality that you now possess that can change your ministry your business your family is standing face to face with a challenge and what you're about to watch within the next few minutes is what I call the dominion power of light over darkness the invincibility of the wisdom and the might and the power of God over darkness it will happen at the speed of light converting your prayer request to a testimony it's not trying to believe a reality here and now. Hello, him Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, him Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, him Adonai. Yeah, na 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 na, yeah, na 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 na, yeah. Please rise up 
on your feet. I believe your power is here. Let your power give me a testimony. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Let it end every captivity by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let it break every burden in my life. Hallelujah. Keep standing, everyone. I want to make an altar call quickly. Right now, everyone stand. There are people here, overflow one, two, three, following us online in this place right now. The Bible says this life is in his son. You don't hear about the son and receive life, you meet the son. There are people standing here, men and women scattered around. You are a pastor, leader, deacon, gentleman, lady, old, young, rich, poor, regardless of your status. Jesus said, ye must be born again. There are people here who have not met Jesus. We have to do this very fast because there will be such an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this place. You are here inside and outside. You have heard what I said. And whilst I was speaking, the Spirit of God, the one we so honor, was beginning to minister to you that you must make your ways right with God and then you've been here and for some reason you've been one leg in and one leg out loved God was on fire but different things happened somewhere around your life and you're here probably standing inside and outside and wondering man of God can I join them most welcome I want to count one to five and um, now this is how we do it I want you to come the first sets of people can come out when they come and here is full then all the others that come will just stand at their various overflows just close to your projector but I want to count one to five and I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain right now one quickly quickly run to Jesus from the depth of your heart you can keep standing you don't have to lie down or kneel down God bless you you don't have to kneel down, madam. You can stand. Quickly. Two. Don't think about it. Run to Jesus. And this life is in his son. And this life is in his son. And this life is in his son. Man of God, I'm not sure whether I'm born again or not. Join them quickly. Join them quickly. I remember coming out for altar call one day but right now I'm not sure no if you are not sure you have to come out when a woman is pregnant she knows you are not sure join them something is wrong with what happened to you three are you coming apostle I'm trying to come out but my neighbor is stopping me we rebuke that spirit trying to stop you come out come to Jesus Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. Let this be the beginning of the miracle service for you. I think we have enough people inside now. Every other person that comes, just direct them to their various overflows outside. 
those coming from outside you can wait there now every moment I'm away Lord have your way Lord have your way me. hallelujah madam look at me you, you love Jesus Christ come I'm seeing you you are not working well what's wrong with you what's wrong with her who brought her because I looked at you and I saw you limping and then I saw in the realm of the spirit severe pain come what's wrong with you from where are you program so she now told me that I should come and attend the program so For I have diabetes and ulcer and my back pain here from the back here down to my leg everything yes I'm feeling the pain very well that is why she asked me to come and do the program with you people here so that is why I came here mommy look at me every one of them you heard what I said everyone will leave you here and you'll go back to Abuja amen Amen. You believe that? Yes. Ma'am. Of course. If it doesn't work, your sister will not ask you to come. Hallelujah. I'm going to lead you people to pray. Join them to pray. We're going to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ and all that devil will go. The ultimate cure is not the prayer for healing. The ultimate cure is Jesus. A man was brought to Jesus crippled and he says, thy sins be forgiven. And people say, ah, what is this? And Jesus said, which is easier? Hi. That means to be healed is easier than to be saved. So it's not as easy. It's not just recitation. Are we together? Mama, I'll pray for you. Go back and join them. Those of you standing here, the overflow, lift your right hand and sincerely, you are not reciting a point. From the depth of your heart, I want you to say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus. You know some of you are crying, but don't worry. Jesus sees your tears. Say, Lord Jesus. I love you. And I believe in you. I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me you shed your blood for me you rose again for me and tonight I receive your life I receive your grace I receive your spirit I declare that I'm born again I'm a child of God in the name of Jesus victory is given to me over sin over the flesh and over the world in Jesus name please keep your hands lifted I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ the power of sin the power of the flesh and the world over you is broken right now I declare your sins forgiven I declare that the life of God is at work in you beginning from today the Lord transforms your life by his spirit in the name of Jesus Christ now I want you to do something for me very quickly please cooperate with all the people um, whether outside any of the overflows there is a gentleman waving his hand some um, of the uh, ushers there I want you to just follow them quietly and then give them your correct details very quickly this is so that we'll follow you up and then we'll get to see you so do that very very quickly very quickly madam I will pray for you you go and write your name and come back while we are waiting for them please make sure we are going to be very fast you see that our time is gone so it's going to be a very quick walk very quick walk we are going straight to the business of the night and I want you to believe it doesn't take time it only takes God it doesn't take time it only takes God very very quickly very very quickly we are going to trust the Lord to please ushers coordinate them very quickly and uh, let's have them back because we want to pray now are we together everyone say after me in the name of Jesus please be serious in the name of Jesus I decree and I declare that every spirit every force every influence standing against God's word over my life I declare that you are under judgment tonight lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice and begin to pray
Lift your voice and pray, everyone. Shala braska da baladia. Shapra teska lebrato shobrige de balada balada ba. Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are always spirits behind the tragedies of men. Whether or not you know, it is there. And until those influences are taken out of your life, victory is far from your reach. Are we together? Number two, I want you to decree and declare that the fire of God must fall upon every challenge you came here with. Say, Lord, visit it one by one until there is total victory don't let the challenge don't let the challenge limit you take your eyes away from it and pray are you praying inside and outside Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can. No one. Lift your hands, everyone. Just lift your hands and be silent. Such a strong anointing in this place tonight. Lift your hands and just be silent. Please. I'm seeing two numbers, five and one. And the Lord is saying there are 51 people here. 51 people. He's bringing massive deliverance to their families. I want you to bring them out 51 people don't shout don't do nothing just keep your hands the Lord is asking me to stretch my hands and the power of God that unction for deliverance will move like wildfire all through the overflows right now I stretch my hands in the name of the Lord God whose I am and whom I serve right now I release the ministry of angels Mighty deliverance right now. Bring them out. Shalabrakataya. Break it to Shubrataka Labraska Labriata. Sapraskata Brakatele Katia Labas. So break it Ali Braska Bariata. Embreko to Soto Pareketa. The fire of God is visiting individuals for their families. I see fire burning. That's what I'm seeing. Bring them out. Just keep your hands lifted. The angel of his presence moving inside and outside. Moving inside and outside. Please quickly, let's have them. Overflow one. I see a strange activity of angels. Strange deliverance. Shigala para koto soto balada. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty in God. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Seketela kata. Keep your hands lifted. 
command it to open. I command it to open. Lord by ancestry. Lord by divination. Lord by necromancy and projection. Manipulation of the constellations. I command in the name of He that holds the key of David. I command that door be open. That no power can shut. Be sensitive tonight. The spirit of God is moving. One of the ushers, one of the ushers, you are an usher, but the unction of the spirit help her visiting your family. Visiting your family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a lady quickly. There's no time to speak. Our time is gone. We have to pray for the sick. But I'm seeing a lady. You have two sisters. Two of them are barren. They are married. No children. Please, where are you? It's part of your prayer request. You are wearing a black dress. You are the one. Come. Hello, Thy kingdom come. I will be Ah, there's witchcraft in your family. Look at me. Come. You are a great lady. But there is terrible witchcraft in your family. There is a lady. Again, the Lord is opening my eyes. I don't know why this happens. I'm seeing a map. Benway. Benway. Benway people get ready. Benway. 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 I see Benway. And the Lord says, stretch your hands and bring deliverance to men in Benway. I stretch my hands right now. The anointing of the Spirit visiting people. Benway. 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 By the Spirit of God. By the Spirit of God. Hear me? And I'm hearing in my spirit, break the covenant of motherhood. I don't know what this means. But this is something that has to do with a covenant involving women. I arrest it right now. In the name of Jesus, I see fire dropping right now. People from Benway, you are from Benway, you come under this influence. Please help that person. Benway, Benway, the spirit of the living God, the spirit of the living God, traveling to Benway, breaking covenant. I speak to the soil of that land, release the destinies tied with you. Listen, what I'm seeing is not good. The Lord is taking me to a vision, and I'm standing and I'm seeing black ropes around trees. This is Otuko, black ropes tied around trees. And the Lord tells me that the destiny of men were tied to those trees in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands. At the count of three, may the fire that the God of Elijah commanded, I command it right now upon every shrine, every activity of darkness. In the name of Jesus, let it come upon you now. Let it come upon you now. Let it come upon you now. Hallelujah. The supernatural I've taught you operates only in partnership with five elements. Listen. Without one or more of these elements, the supernatural cannot find expression. Guy, I'm seeing a wild this is a serpent. I'm looking at this person and I'm not seeing a human being again. I'm seeing a serpent. I stretch my hands. The Bible says, For the light shines in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Now listen carefully. Five elements of the supernatural. Number one is light. The supernatural cannot find expression until it can use the medium of light. Number two, the air, sound. 
the supernatural cannot find expression until there is a medium of sound number three the earth the earth is a universal point of contact every living thing makes contact with it number three are we together number four water the mystery that bears witness water is not an entity water is history water is a memory bank of the realm of the spirit contained within it are more mysteries than we understand number five fire a mystery entity that does not run away from anything and yet consumes everything purifies and destroys can make and kill the only personality with the quality of fire is god can make a life and destroy it would destroy another thing and in it lift another thing purify gold and destroy the impurities i want us to use one of the elements of the supernatural because everyone is standing on the ground i want to pray for you the lord is asking me to break delay please just follow me we are coming to the sick people but just follow me tonight let's walk circumspectly i'm seeing people whose feet have been tied down they cannot move you are here no matter what you do there is no progress this is the story of your family look at me the lord wants to visit you first even before your family your two sisters they are married no child are you married you are not married we have to pray i don't know if you believe what i'm telling you but god is raising you to be a savior in your family believe this thing no you may not look like it but it is the spirit of deborah but first and foremost you must be delivered first god is not finished with her i command that devil go there is no hiding in his presence in the name of jesus christ hold my hands my dear in the name of jesus the lord god whom i serve i command the reign of witchcraft as i hold you right now over your sisters over your life and over your family i command them to be broken right now i release upon you grace for restoration in the name of jesus and i pray for you that grace of deborah that causes women to rise with the strength of men i release that grace upon you i want you to go and tell your sisters the lord brings a visitation to them even as he did to hannah at shiloh the lord comes for them with strange visitations in the name of the lord jesus christ now all those under the anointing i command the spirits any spirit that has been located by god must leave the victims therefore in the name of jesus and at the count of three you know my voice i represent his majesty at the count of three you must let them go now and forever one two three be gone go out of their lives destinies now and forever out of their lives out of their destinies i prophesy recovery i prophesy recovery i prophesy recovery for when a thief is caught he's made to pay back tenfold i command recovery in the name of jesus let them go there is no hiding for his light shines upon you in the name of jesus christ listen if there is any project you are involved in lift your hand any project business project building project please just lift your hands before i pray we pray the prayer that will release speed projects ah. i'm standing and i'm seeing an angel of the lord walking across this place and i'm standing here and he's saying i should stretch my hands here there is a visitation that is coming for the people here therefore i stretch my hands lord your will be done i don't know those who you are bringing perfection to them right now in the name of jesus i release that unction and that grace everyone within this vicinity let there be supernatural deliverances and supernatural miracles help them in the name of jesus christ in the mighty name of jesus christ in the mighty name of jesus christ now everyone is standing i want to pray for you please listen there is such a thing as advancement in a man's life 
is not a doctrine it's an experience where a man can make progress spiritually financially business wise if you are in a position for a long time it's a sign that something is wrong are we together it says ye have come past this mountain long enough then it tells you the formula the door is in the north it said turn northwards turn northwards you have come past this mountain long enough i want you to stand on the ground i see physical fire rising and sweeping consuming people's feet some of you as this is happening you will hear the sounds of physical chains literally physical chains this will happen i want us to shout the name of jesus three times that's what the holy ghost is telling me i will lead you and you will shout it the third time the chains of delay and stagnation will will break open many of you physically physically you feel it happening thank you jesus let the word of god come upon this prophecy are you ready now number one are you ready number two now i want you to get ready that grace that came upon elijah and caused him to run overtaking the chariots of ahas speed and advancement is coming on people right now are you ready shout jesus receive it now receive it now let the earth deliver to your destiny the keys of advancement I command you to advance I command you to move forward I break limitations I break limitations I command advancement outside advancement the overflows advancement may that anointing hit you advancement 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 in the name of Jesus the son of the living God no power can stop you our God is greater our God is stronger God you are higher than many other. help me our God is here awesome in power your hands towards me don't lift it up stretch it towards me there is there is going to be an activation of strange gifts strange gifts strange gifts strange gifts the time for impartation will come but fire is living and it's coming upon people and the Lord said let them stretch their hands in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands back to you in the name of Jesus gifts 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 don't man gifts don't man gift. where is it I call it forth now don't man gift don't man gift you may not know it's there I'm not talking of the gifts of the spirit I'm talking of potentials gifts gifts I stir it up right now like a well i command it like the axe head i command it to float right now i command it to float right now gifts that will bring you honor gifts gifts hallelujah hallelujah gifts there is a lady I'm looking at you now in the realm of the spirit you are dressed in something that looks like orange like the house are dressing from your head to who is that who is that come from this row 
Jesus prays. What's your name? Veronica. From where? I came from Abuja. You came from Abuja. As I stood here, I was hearing your prayer and you were saying, Lord, let this man of God locate him. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you that two things now. Number one is captivity and reproach is being rolled away from your life. That's the first thing that is happening to you. Captivity and reproach. Captivity and reproach. Inside, inside the main auditorium, from where people sit in front, count nine lines, nine rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The power of God is coming on somebody on that row right now. Inside. Inside. It's a strange miracle coming for that person. The ninth row. Supernatural manifestation of the power of God. My sister, what do you want the Lord to do in your life? Uh -uh. You are just generalizing. Huh? I'm looking at you and then I'm seeing your heart. And I'm seeing... Should I say it? Do you believe you can? Are you married? Huh? Where's your husband? Did you come with him? What do you want the Lord to do for him? See, this man is your real prayer. That's that's you want the Lord to honor him. And what what is he doing now? I'm seeing him leaving that place oh, to another place. That has been your desire. Go and tell him that a man of God has prophesied to him that he's going to leave that place supernaturally supernaturally and that he should stop wasting his time over the person he's calling all the time to help him that's not where his help will come from go and tell him that the lord said he can raise help anywhere in the name of jesus christ i pray amen and amen there is a lady here in this room in this um place i'm hearing grace please let's hurry up quickly so i can leave this place we have to pray for the sick i'm hearing grace grace who is that you are down at that side grace who is that wearing red grace that's okay grace your name is grace this is not this is is it maimuna is it maimun or something i'm hearing a name maimuna 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 I wish we had time today but we have to pray for the sick i want us to leave this very fast because i'm going to counsel well just leave her i found the person but but you come my dear i want to pray who is this no 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 no. it's not just any grace i pray for you my dear lift your hands god wants to visit your family there are four people here a very strange unction for revelation and teaching is coming upon you now no 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 four of you right now a strong power is hitting you right now just in this this place outside i don't know what it is about this place maybe the miracle services will start coming here now there is there's real faith in this place my dear i end it now i end it now in the name of jesus christ Keep your hands on her stomach i end it now i command that reproach taken from your life in the name of jesus don't come out for social reasons but i'm seeing a lady here you have suffered a very terrible infection this is a, a woman issue a terrible infection this thing you have treated it and done everything you know to do but it has refused to go this is witchcraft it's not just a normal infection you have spent your money but right now the Lord is saying I should prophesy to you that it comes to an end. Complete end. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Complete end. I stretch my hands. Four people. Right now here in this room. Lord, where are they? One is a lady. Three are gentlemen. Step into that dimension. That's right. Help them. Thank you, Jesus. Hold on. There is a mother here. God wants to wipe her tears. Madam, who is a gala here? Hold on. You are a gala. From where? From where? Opo. Where is that? Is there a place like that in the gala land? Huh? In Kogi State. So that you don't come and tell us lies. If, if you are not from there, just wait. There is your turn will come. From 
Lift your hands. I'm seeing an attack on your life and your family. And the Lord is with you free. Madam, where is your child? Did you come with your child? There's no time to waste, please. I'll just pray for you so that we can go. In the name of witchcraft, now. And on you right now. Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hand. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. Say it in the name of Jesus. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is bringing into my life strange testimonies lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice those outside are you praying lift your voice and begin to pray Kai, one of the things listen hold on i'm seeing now i want you to believe it i just looked up and i started hearing the cry of as if babies just fill the room listen carefully I just lifted i wanted to move and i just lifted my eyes and the lord told me that one of the major miracles he's doing tonight is giving people children if you are standing in for barrenness whether you are in any overflow please come in i want to minister to you by myself barrenness only barrenness please husband and wife if you are standing for barrenness except you are standing in for someone if you are standing alone you must be married praise god you are standing alone you must be married in the name of Jesus may that grace come upon you by the power of the Holy Spirit please stand you can go you can go Pastor Alpha now we are going to pray and while they are doing that let's buy time ushers move around all the overflows make sure you collect the request of everybody I notice overflow three there are few people attending to them there so let's have people you see why we need more ushers and we need more people say after me father, father. everyone shout it father, father. We, receive we receive your visitation, your visitation. in the name of jesus name of we, receive we receive miracles signs, signs. And, wonders. and wonders now please accept they ask you you don't have to tell them what is wrong don't worry the hand of god is here to bless you in the name of jesus christ father we give you all the praise those online i want you to connect by faith and trust the power of god to touch you we have very few minutes to do this and in the name of jesus will be done no matter what the issue is as we touch you start checking yourself you can register your testimony we'll take it on friday whether you are standing in for someone don't worry the power of god is there to touch you in the name of jesus father we give you all the praise do you know why I came here? Because I saw that this woman, your issue is not just healing. Hold on. I saw the, her holding pictures and a passport. And then I'm looking at it. And I saw a plane. Is it something like you were staying outside the country? Is that true? Yes, sir. Because I'm seeing a woman, a plane, bringing you. Is that true? Uh -uh. And the Lord is opening my eyes. I'm seeing another vision. I'm seeing a quarrel between you and a man like your husband and that man drove you yes sir he drove yes sir from where from abroad where is abroad Qatar. from where where is he this is you yes. ah. one week. oh my god this is a baby look at me why did he drive you away you see why prophecy is powerful look at this woman come madam I looked at these things and the Lord told me that this woman needs help. I know I'm taking time, but let's attend. Madam, don't cry. It's okay. Where were you before? No other man. We are together in our blood. We are together. Are, were you married? Yes, sir. You are from where? Benway State, sir. You are from Benway? Yes, sir. You see, I told you what God was saying about Benway. You, you married him and went abroad? Yes, sir. Then what happened? He said, as you come back, my paper is having issue. Not knowing that he went and married secretly from my community. 
to he married another woman. Yes, from my Jesuit community, sir. He's staying abroad with her. Yes, sir. He drove you away with the baby. Yes, sir. No, he, he drove me when the pregnancy was one week. <laughs> Did he know you were pregnant? No, sir. Immediately I took it. He now said to come see, back. Man, listen. This this is what we, we keep saying again and again. Please listen to me. Now I don't mean no disrespect. But you see why ladies will tell you people to marry people who are born again, not just people who have money. Huh? Don't let anybody just come and show you one shoe, one bag, and just carry you around like that. It must be godly. Look at what this man did for this woman. One week and left her with this innocent child. So where are you staying now? I'm staying out in Abuja. So my it's sister. from Abuja you came? Yes, sir. What do you want God to do for you? I want God to bring him back for me, sir. He married another woman. Yes, sir. She knew you were his wife. Yes, And she still came and married. Yes, my dad is also here, sir. Where's your dad? Yes. Daddy, yes. please come, sir. Oh, he cannot walk. After my marriage, I now send stroke to him, sir. He's from... Okay, Benway, too. Yes, sir. Why am I seeing light leaving you to this man? Come. What's your relationship with her? He's my stepbrother. I'm a I mean, stepbrother, the firstborn of the family. You are the firstborn? Yes, sir. From where? From a penal state. You are suffering. Hi. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Nothing is working your life. Yes, sir. At all. You need the hand of God. Look at your father. Look at this man. Look at this dear man. You see this? This, brothers and sisters, believe it or not, is what witchcraft looks like. Are you seeing this? Whether you are in Qatar or wherever, if that spirit is not destroyed, this is what it will do. Because I stood and I looked at her and I saw a plane carrying a woman, but she didn't look. If you see this woman, does she look like somebody who has gone abroad? I'm not insulting you. You can see that this woman was not even treated well. Suffered with the man. Now he went abroad and sent her back. When this baby now, if we decide to carry this baby and take care of this baby, when this baby becomes responsible, the man will now call the court and come and say he wants his child back. Then they will now accuse men of God and accuse everybody and say everybody is stupid. You are using the baby to make to get power. You see why sometimes we avoid these things it's not because we cannot help people honestly it's because sometimes the media right now are experts at stigmatizing men of god you do anything to try to help this baby now you'll be in trouble are we together help me you're the god of awesome one he stood up your power The Lord is opening my eyes. The same spirit that made that man drive you is making him fight with this woman now. They are not even. No, 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 no. I'm not seeing peace. Huh? I'm not seeing peace. I'm seeing a situation where this man is coming and checking the woman's phone. And then I'm seeing another man's text. And the man is giving her a dirty slap. Slap on her face. The Bible said, What God has joined. What's his name? Simon, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power that created the heavens and the earth, I call you back to your wife. In the name of Jesus, may you encounter a man of God and an anointing that will save you and deliver you there. And I declare in the name of Jesus, this baby will not be a bastard. Baby, I speak to you. Every foundational thing programmed in your spirit as a baby, we cancel it right now. Madam, look at me. I decree and declare 
the favor that was on Esther that made Hadassah look at her once and had to call her to be his queen may that favor come upon you listen don't go to any native doctor you hear me because I'm seeing one mama coming to you in Abuja and she's telling you that there's somebody she told you he's a man of God he's a native doctor don't go anywhere huh? and number two anybody that says you should bring one naira what did I say one naira for prayer just thank him and walk away if, if this poor woman you still collect money from her for prayer then you must be a very wicked person isn't it in the name of Jesus he will return with testimony my brother come are you walking what do you want God to do in your life I'm, I'm a pastor so when I, I mean God called me into ministry so in the field the back to the I mean the came so tough the the attack and the uh, foundation it became so strong so I took off I, I couldn't stay but up, up to now God is still calling me back to where I serve him I've been serving him to God where where were you serving in Kogi State no you need mentorship you need covering you need impartation you don't just get up like that and go into ministry God saved you they would have killed you like a chicken there are rules to this thing eh? it's not just because you touch somebody and he fell down you get up and go to Kogi State do you know what pursued you back eh? is the mercy of God it's not witchcraft they would you would have died like a chicken please listen I'm not scaring you but there are systems don't get up out of zeal and just say I am anointed be careful as powerless as Satan is is your understanding that this depowers him if you don't have that understanding you can be anointed and your life will be destroyed praise the Lord my brother hold my hands I'm not just seeing you doing ministry truly you need help eh? you need help after service come and see this man pastor alpha eh? after service come and see him he will talk with you and guide you and train you and help you in the name of Jesus Christ a time of prophecy and activations some of you are here because you desire higher levels of unction in your ministries your lives your businesses the prophetic word of God is very powerful when there is grace back in it because it does not only reveal it creates are we together in the next about two or three minutes i want your heart to genuinely and desperately be open be open in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing a grace walking in this gentleman you are the first i know you are doing protocol work but you are the first to receive this grace i see a grace of two of you supernatural gift of the holy ghost taking you to a new dimension in the spirit hallelujah venga come grace another dimension of fire lift your hands grace fresh fire fresh dimension fresh fire fresh dimension fresh fire fresh dimension you speak and there is power of performance power of performance power of performance power of performance no word will be empty you speak and there's grace and the power of performance hallelujah someone come and hold victor come come and hold them somebody grace supernatural influence and wisdom and victory in a strange dimension a dimension you have never seen in your life in the name of Jesus supernatural grace I open up that level grace in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ, the of Jesus Christ. where shall they we're rounding up they are doing their 
Please please someone hold her. I don't want hold the child. Please 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 have just a minute or two. Hold her. Make sure that ladies you come and hold her. Father, in the name of Jesus, the Lord is quickening the power of sight. The grace to see. Grace to see. The grace to see. Make sure you are holding her well. The grace to see. Penny, you are taking back fresh fire. Fresh fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. Fresh fire. I'm not, it's not like I'm just picking people. This is this is just by the spirit. Come. The Lord is bringing glory on you. Fresh fire. Give it upon your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, you see. Hold on. We're out of time, but Pastor, house on the rock, come. You have been desiring something for a long time. Come. God is giving it to you in this season. In the name of Jesus. May that fire, may that grace take it. Drink of that wine in the name of Jesus. Fresh unction. Fresh unction. Capacity. Open up your capacity in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's a heavy spirit under that small girl. In the name of Jesus Christ. Place it on her. Just place it on her. Leave, leave it there. In the name of Jesus. Judgment upon that devil. Foul spirit. Hallelujah. We're out of time, but I want you to receive. Let me start with the men of God. You are in ministry here. It's time to take something heavy and something genuine. Let me pray. Jamfa, come. Ejimi, come. I'm seeing a, a new, a truly new grace and a new wine. New grace. And a new one is supernatural dimension. Dimension. This grace will speak in unbelievable ways. Lord, bring him into that experience. In the name of Jesus. Truly bring him into that experience. I open up. I open up. I open up. Closed fountains. I open up now. Closed fountains. I open up now. Fire. Fresh grace for influence. Influence, influence, business influence, new grace, new dimensions of wealth, influence, commanding miracles, strange miracles. Collect that child from hope. Collect that child from hope. In the name of Jesus, fresh fire hope. I activate that dimension. Fresh fire. In the name of Jesus, God is giving you eyes that see strange dreams revealing direction for people's lives in the name of jesus where's aaron aaron where's aaron in the name of jesus christ the lord says i should tell you seasons of reward are before you seasons of great and strange reward father let it be by the power of your spirit by the power of your spirit lift your hands in the name of jesus christ Something is coming strong. Go. The unction for new levels in ministry at the count of three. If you are here in ministry, there is a call of God upon your life. One, two, that fire comes now. Take that fire now. Take that fire. A new level of ministry, a new level of power. A new level of grace never to be barren never to be barren never to be barren never to be barren where's Yerima head of department media please come quickly quickly I'm praying where is he oh that's him there 
in the name of Jesus the Lord says he's bringing you honor untold honor untold honor by the spirit of the living God untold honor untold honor untold honor now I decree and declare Jordan where's Jordan Jordan bookstore I hear restoration where are you restoration fire that restoration fire in the name of Jesus everything the canker worm the palmer worm has stolen restoration in the name of Jesus now I pray for you by the power of the Holy Ghost the Spirit of God comes upon you and you begin to run like Elijah I prophesy speed receive it now receive it now speed 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 of the spirit speed by the unction of the spirit speed in the name of Jesus hallelujah every helper of your destiny that is supposed to show up and partner with you and endorse you to the next level in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands and I place an unction on your life. Receive of their ministry now. Receive of their ministry now. Receive of their ministry now. Where's Pastor Alpha's wife? Just hold her there. She's heavy. So in the name of Jesus, the Lord is saying, have I not said I will bring you favor? It will manifest. God is bringing favor after you give birth to your child pastor your family will step into a strange level of favor it will be at the commencement of this boy's birth or this child the moment the child is born in the name of jesus christ there will be strange miracles by the anointing of the holy spirit i pray for you the kind of glory and honor you have never seen upon your life i declare receive it now Receive it right now. All your tithes, your giving, God has released the blessings, but something has hijacked it in the realm of the spirit. I command a release of your harvest. I command a release of your harvest. I command a release of your harvest. whatever was not working in your life before you came here i decree by the spirit of the living god go back to it and watch it work in a way that will shock you whoever opens his mouth to mock your god goes down immediately i say it again whoever opens his mouth to mock your god goes down immediately anyone here been eyed by the spirit of death to make sure that the earth kills you to make sure that you die or any bad news from your family i cancel it right now in the name of jesus christ as you step into the month of may by the power that is in the name of jesus i declare in one month alone in one month he said have you ever had this that a city is born in one day he said but as soon as zion travails she shall put forth a son i declare in one month this month of may a dimension of the ministry of the holy spirit to bring you strange results receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus I pray for your family members in the name that is above all names if they have never testified from January till now I command testimonies from next month I pray for those who are students you wrote your exams you cannot rest you are afraid whatever went wrong I change it now whatever went wrong I change it now I don't care what went wrong 
I change it now. Anyone here trusting God for a job? By me, miracle service. As surely as the God of heaven lives. May God shake the heavens and the earth and give you your job. And you are here, you are walking and they've refused to promote you. Whoever sits on your promotion gets out of his office. In the name of Jesus Christ. Any human being on this earth who has fraternized with the elements of the supernatural to limit your life, I pray now, I command all the elements of the supernatural to fight them. The same way the stars fought for Deborah. I command the earth to fight them. I command their success to fight them. Anyone who has trivialized your grace and neglected what you represent to make sure that doors don't open for you, I decree and declare in their presence the Lord will lift you any prayer life here that has died because of carelessness carnality whatever it is sin that has been responsible for destroying your prayer life your passion you were on fire for God but there's laziness carelessness lukewarmness in the name of Jesus like the hair of Samson I command a sevenfold restoration for you now. Prayer fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.